have to see the Navy when you get to see Oh, man. <laughs> so, what's happening, y'all? Uh, just trade it back and forth. <laughs> what? <coughs> Sorry to do you like this, yo. Uh, Miss Believe Radio Show is going to go live. I got it. And uh, <laughs> we ain't had no sound engineer. We had to Brian had to get it back. Crash course real quick. So look. <laughs> we got minutes. Don't don't start yet, Brian. <laughs> Um, share this video if you watch it. We're going to have fun. It's going to be an interesting episode. We got comedian Rob Kazi. We have a uh, poet, singer, songwriter, Miss Aria Monet. Um, we got the homie Bats. What's good? What's good? <laughs> the homie Malik. Lasagna. And I guess some kind of way I'm going to be, um, I'm going to be holding the It's a sausage party! <laughs> <laughs> the dude's on his down! I would misbelieve Mrs. Oshun. Uh, uh, she got fired again, <laughs> <laughs> basically. And um, and uh, Jay Steele will be here just a little bit later. But as of now, we're just the guys. What up, Lamont? I see you. Share this video, y'all, from the... Um, let me share it from the misbelieve page. And then y'all share it from your personal pages. And um, let people see how much fun we be having. What up, Miss Janae McGee? You want to take this? You know what? I'm turning around so we could meet the whole time. Who that is? The freak Malik the Greek. Oh, oh, so. <laughs> I didn't even know you was pointing at me. I thought it was back on you. It's Let me you. get this. All right. He's still the geek in his building. <clears throat> Brian is awesome, yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna make it work. I ain't lying. It's gonna be a good show, yo. <laughs> Malik don't want to hold that thing all day. Hey, we we got this. Oh, he trying to go on at seven. But I let Master P say his thing first. Yeah, af after Master P, I would, I would Master never P, interview Master man. P. It's P. We on. Real talk, real time. What the heck is that? There, we there it is. There <laughs> it is. I see you, Brian. <laughs> to tell you the truth, not a box of piss in an old window to throw it through. Ah, uh, ah. Uh, I say what's happening. I say what's happening. I say what's happening. What's happening, y'all? Welcome to the Misbelieve Radio Show here on WBOK AM 1230. We're live here in the studio, um, but you could be watching me on my Facebook Live or on the YouTube. Or? Or you could be tuned into the podcast available at themisbelieve.podbean.com. Or? Or you subscribe to us on iTunes. It's free if you got the podcast app. Um, check us out. By the way, I'm DC Paul, the Millennial Arsenio, slim waist, baby face, deep voice, number one choice, and the hardest working man in show business. Um, I'm claiming it, and uh, we 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 don't have we got a small cast of colorful characters and creative cool kids cruising yeah. as my co-host with me today. Who's this to my left side? It's that actor guy, Martin Bass Bradford, the master, the master of necromonies, the doctor of necronomics, in your building to handle it up as always. You feel me? You heard me? You under. We, I, I underdig that one, you heard me? And okay, how you feel, Bats? Feeling well, you know what I'm saying? I'm feeling like a man, DC Paul. We're going to tell them why we feel like men. <laughs> okay. After our intro. After our intro, okay. <laughs> That's real. Okay, and then who does this to my right side? So, yo, this is Malik Bartholomew, the historical delight. I always get it right. Oh, 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 oh. I am trying to get it on you. So, yeah. You better historical delight <laughs> get it right than you get, get it on him. Oh, oh yeah. I love it. Historical <laughs> delight, baby. And, man, we got a special guest <laughs> <laughs> in in the it's booth, who's yeah. that? Who's that in the booth this week? I see you, beautiful. <laughs> Keep it up, beautiful. <laughs> yeah, Brian is usually the producer of uh, the Ms. Believe Radio Show. Uh, He's the guy that helps us um, keep it together, really. He helps us with a lot of stuff. He, he normally he coordinates with the guests, and he helps us upload the podcast. Today, he just got another notch on his belt. He is the audio engineer for this thing, too. Shout out to beautiful Brian. If only he knew how to do it. If only he knew how to do it. If only he knew how to do it. Fake applause. 
<laughs> Next week, that's cool, man. Good to have you here, Brian. Shout um, out to the mastermind doing the nineties. Uh, he doing a DJ gig where it's like nineties music all night. So 90s. that's, that's oh, where yeah, mastermind. You better be somewhere else more important than this. Ellen <laughs> <laughs> business too. But that's cool, man. Also, I would misbelieve misses are um, fired. <laughs> fired both of them. I don't need them no more. I take that back. I, see, I, I take know, that we back. We always need black. I, I do. I do we? I do we? They just saved the world. world. Yeah. <laughs> Where would we be without black women? Jeez, Louise, Louise. Where would we be? We as four black men sitting in this station. In this station, what? Where would we be without a black woman? In a nutsack. I can say that. I can say that on the no. radio, can't I? I'm most like we're gonna get fired regardless. Okay, cancel that shit regardless. Probably gonna cancel me just for saying that second. And I said it again. Um, you said it twice. I said it twice. <laughs> oh, uh, well, so before, because you want to get into some, but before, before we get, we do. I got a quick story. Yeah, get it in. Um, so, some of y'all know I've uh, recently launched my, my website, uh, whoisdcpaul.com. Whoisdcpaul.com. Yeah. Um, and I've been trying to take my brain to the next level. Um, you know, and part of that is uh, being selective with the gigs that I take. Mm -hmm. I got a manager now, um, and she, oh. wants, yeah, she wants me to be very selective with the gigs that I take. Um, so, like, true story, this guy contacted me uh, about a week or so ago. Um, he wants me to be the celebrity guest correspondent on the red carpet at a twerk contest. <laughs> He um, said, it's, "Yeah." Uh, what he said is, is five hundred dollars for the biggest booty, um, four hundred dollars for the smallest booty, mm. um, and they could pay me in free drinks all night. Wait, pause. They gonna uh, get paid uh, for having uh, the smallest booty? That's what he said. The small booty for the love biggest booty, too, huh? right? He was, yes. So he was like, um, so a celebrity guest correspondent on the red carpet at a twerk contest. Um, five hundred for the biggest booty, four hundred for the smallest booty. They pay me in free drinks all night. And I was like, hold on. Did you just call me a celebrity? <laughs> I will take it. I will take it. <laughs> so, He's so petty. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So I actually... Yeah. So I see I'm you, Brian. Right 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 Man, you are good. So no, but, but, but the story continues. So. Wait, hold up. That's simply a words, though. The red carpet of a twerk contest. Mm -hmm. Those don't even go together. <laughs> but keep going, son. So I went to my manager, and I was like, uh, you know, I, I think I want to do this. And she was like, absolutely not. <laughs> you will not do this. And I'm like, listen, first of all, these are the first people that ever called me a celebrity. Okay, and secondly... To your face? To my face, yeah. yeah. And secondly, um, I have the option of winning $400, because my booty is super small. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm, I'm not going to pass this gig up. You know, uh, $400 for a small booty and some celebrity and, status. And um, free drinks. Yeah, sure. I'm, I don't want to. I don't want to act like I'm an alcoholic or nothing. But can you get your friends on the list? Yeah, sure, sure. I mean, and, and free drinks. Truth, truth <laughs> be told, man. Truth be told, he asked me to text him a list of names for my guest list, and I was like, "Name if I don't know my But sure, if you guys would like to come. Well, I mean, it's such a, it would be a historical delight. Yeah, to, to be one of the first people at a, at a red carpet twerk contest can event. We, can we have like judging cars? Like, yeah, yeah so. like. Tens across the board, and then, and then for, the, for the small booties. Yeah, yeah you, you should One's rate across the board. You should, you should rate the whole event from is this from a from a like a not for a nine person in history to like a a Thurgood Marshall. But nah, nah, you, <laughs> but nah, we got to get a Rosa Parks. Rosa Parks, 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 we got, we got, we got a rating. How, so that the Harry Tubman booty would fall where, like at, 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 uh, amongst the biggest. No, like that would be that revolutionary booty. Revolution. Like it's just a wild, it's a combative booty. It's not a combative. You don't feel comfortable talking about Harry Tubman. Hold on, no, no, no. no, 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 no we have, we have, we have talked about Harry Tubman having a side piece on this show before. You're right. You're right. What else about her? Didn't we being talk about pimp, her throwing that ass in a circle and mm -hmm. also being a pimp? So. But she was also, but she was really like a like a gangster. You hear me? But like, just something about talking about the curvature of a Gluteus Maximus just makes me feel uncomfortable. All of a so, sudden, you want to? You, you, you think Harry Tubman me wouldn't turn down an option to be on the perk team? Yes, I think she would. Dog. I think she'd send somebody out there to do that. She'd just be standing there like a boss, arms folded, like bring me back my money. Harry Tubman. Ain't twerking there one sheet, but give me my money. Wait, wait, Harry Tubman a stud. Wait, she Harry seemed like she, she, I think she would be a stud with, if we had the truth. Rocking the, the, the do-rag. <laughs> send one of her lightweights out there. Handle the handle 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 contest, you heard me? Come on. I got things to do. I ain't finna, okay. This is the type of conversation. <laughs> 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 and that's why we need the misbelieved missus to come. I'm going to be like, no. 
<laughs> no, inappropriate. So, Bez, you said oh, you and shouts out to the homie um, that has the Harriet Tubman Demon Slayer comic book that is a black guy. I follow him on Facebook, and I feel like that's, I don't know, I forgot his name that quick. I follow this dude, but uh, it's an amazing comic book. I mean, look at it. Harriet Tubman Demon Slayer. He flipped the whole deal up. You know, that he is went, pretty dope. Dude, like, you hear his right here. Um, uh, what's his name? Uh, his name isn't coming up right now. We can but search for Harry find Harriet Demon Tubman Slayer. Demon Slayer. This black guy flipped the whole deal, and I think this could be something huge. She back there that's destroying not only like racist people, but mm -hmm. demons and vampires and zombies all in that back time. So we talk about Harriet Tubman being a G. There ain't no more G than that to see Harriet Tubman with swords and machetes just handling business. Look at this picture. True, yeah, that's pretty dope. Peace. If you if you're on Facebook, check out Harry Tubman, Demon Slayer. Um, it's pretty dope, and it's, it's a black uh, comic book artist who created mm -hmm. that and one. And writer, right? and writer. Yeah, but I mean, it's like he he going all the way with it. He's all, yeah, I think he, he's been so his he has his. Look, get my words right. Two issues in, two issues sold out. So it's a it's a thing. It's a thing. So get it in. But like as far as being a man, you see, you trying to ask me what's coming to DC. Yeah, yeah, because yeah, 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 you you yeah. you you apparently you're feeling your your manhood. David uh, Crouchin is the guy's name. David Crouchin. But anyway, no, I was, I'm, it's because of you that I'm feeling my manhood, DC what Paul. I, what did I, I didn't do? think I would ever have to say, dang, DC just made me feel. What did I do? Like a man. Oh man! What is, oh, wow. Okay. From my DC house. And we both talking about how, man, we artists, mm -hmm. but we really don't, you know, we're not the handyman types, you feel me? We're like, not. And, and it's so unfortunate because my, so my grandpa was such a handyman, but for whatever reason, I didn't soak in all that knowledge on the cattle on YouTube, and people be thinking, but that, you're so aggressive, aggressive, you seem so... So oh, man. But no, I cannot fix nothing, you yeah. heard me? No. So, DC over there, he like, man, my toilet leaking, bro, and I, I don't want to pay all this money to get somebody to come through and fix it. I want to figure out how I'm going to fix this on my own. I feel like it shouldn't be too much. Are you going to help me? Now, I preface it. I'm like, all right, DC, now, Paul. Like, <laughs> I can, I'm here for you. I'm here for you in spirit. I'm here for you mentally, emotionally. I'm here. We can pray. We can have a whole situation. But I don't know nothing about that handyman stuff, yeah, dog. You sure? He was like, bro. Me neither. <laughs> I, just, I, just, I just needed you to be there. <laughs> for the support. For the, so, for the support. So we go to the hardware store, and DC asks me straight up, like, man, you know, is, is, this, is this a hard thing to do? Is this something I can do? He said, well, as soon as I tell you how to do it, <laughs> you can, you uh, you gonna know how to do it. It's pretty simple. Man, old head ran it down, hell the hell ran it down, and me and DC both listen, like, you know what? That makes sense. I feel like, I feel like, yeah, I feel like that's possible. So we go back to the crib. DC at first hitting up sewage and water boy said, how, how do I let me turn off the water to my condo? He finds this thing on his own. He's like, oh, that's going to see if the water go off. I'm just guessing. He switched it and the water went off. His guess was correct. I was like, oh, snap. I know how to turn the water on and off in my crib. Bang, you heard me? <laughs> so then we go to the hard part. We go to the hard part. We go up there to the leaky, the leaky toilet. And, and it is leaking. And it, and it is leaking a lot. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and DC, like, he grabs his, his pliers. He grabs his, his tools. He's like, all right, I'm about to get in here. So he start twisting it. He start twisting it, and it ain't going nowhere. And, and, and he like, bro, what, 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 what's going on? So I thought it was like tidy righty, loosey lefty. I'm going loosey lefty, and it ain't, it ain't loosey and all lefty and none of this. And I was like, well, man, try, try stage left uh -huh. from the wall. You heard me? Because you know we actors, you know stage left, stage right. That's what we go off of. He said, all right, I'll do that. He twisted it, and like a champ. Came off. What do you know? What do you know? From that point, man, he replaced the part. Then he went to the store and got another part because he started feeling like even more manly. And he replaced that without me. But either way, at the end of the day, I sat back and felt like I had to twist some stuff too. And since I had to twist some stuff too, I was like, dang, we yep. just fixed the toilet sure without did. paying $200 to the plumber. Mm -hmm. So you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So, my, so mm -hmm. I feel my nutsack feels enlarged. I feel like Wait, that's, that's the third time we said nutsack. That's why I went four. back. It's, it's a callback. It's a okay, callback. I'm okay. also, I'm not even to be sexist. I feel like an adult. I feel like we adulted it. Okay. Yeah, which I, I adulted so hard. I don't want to adult for the rest of the weekend after that. I fixed mm. my own toilet. Yeah, you know I man. My dad would be so proud. Without you know? YouTube. No, no we YouTube. Sure didn't grab the YouTube we didn't grab videos. We sure didn't. We no. Talked. We wait, talked about wait, it. Wait, we talked. Video, but we did not. Wait, wait. wait. Y'all didn't use YouTube? No, oh, we, we just didn't. looked at it. We looked at the thing that the, 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 the week. See, that, that's how bad we I don't know the name of the piece. We looked at the piece that was given to us. <laughs> and it, looked, it seemed like this is the part that it would go like this. And we just jumped in. Mm. And now we're even manlier men than we were before. More testosterone than I ever had before. Ever. Fix the toilet valve. Bang. <laughs> what y'all want built out there? Yeah, so shout out to all of the, all of the, the creative-minded people who who be doing some non-creative-minded stuff. Straight up. And using your creative training. 
I'm also on the performance end. Because, you know, we got our techies out here who laughed at us. Like, I build sets for a living. What are you talking about? In my no, he's talking about you. Yeah, 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 he's no, talking yeah, about the people yeah, that you, yeah. you know, that sing and dance and perform. You're about like, the I know. performing artists who, yeah. who don't know how to fix toilets. And then when you fix a toilet and you use the knowledge that you already had, of course, you feel more manly. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, man. I feel like I could go just father some kids right now. And just right like, now. Just leave them to raise themselves. Thank, Thank you, Brian. <laughs> Thank you, Brian. I appreciate you. Um, on that note, I think we're going to take a break. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's a good time to take a break. Brian, what you got queued Beautiful Brian, what you got queued up for the first song? Oh, come on, Elliot Love. So Elliot Love, his birthday is coming up. I want to say the December 22nd or 23rd. We'll be roasting him, hosted by the Millennial Arsenio DC Paul. We're doing a roast at 14 Parishes. Um, stay tuned for more information. And please don't go there looking for a piece of meat. <laughs> well, not that, well, you know, <laughs> not that type of me, but, Unless, you know. Because <laughs> I will be there. <laughs> <laughs> Looking quite delectable, <laughs> might I yeah. You know, so yeah, anyways, yeah. that's your face. All right, um, so this is Running High from Elliot Love, y'all. Stay tuned to the Misbelieve Radio Show. Shout out to beautiful Brian, and don't get nothing on you. Bib life. I'm going to go talk to Brian. First of all, Rob Kazi came in the What's studio. Um, are you one? They in the studio. <laughs> I'm <laughs> Brian then figured out how to use the boards, boy. Boy, you earning that, that producer credit. That's what a god you is. What you writing down? Song titles. Look at you, working double. Brian is usually holding the camera for the Facebook Live, but we look at we everybody persevering today. The homie Aaron came back, didn't even have to come back, son. You ain't got to match you, Brian got it. And you figured out how to do the sound effects. Yeah, but he didn't know he didn't know how to do it. He figured it out on the spot. Miss Ari Monet, you ready to come on in? First of all, we got a, a minute, ten minutes to talk to the Facebook Live. What you wanna say? Um if you missed either Sex Live or Couches last night. I heard. I heard you missed out and that's like I feel bad for you. We're gonna um, talk about sex live when you yeah. when you come in here. <laughs> yeah. Why you, well, you don't want to? No, no, no. We definitely yeah, we don't, And, and, and was, also the other bookings that you happen to have coming up or have had recently, right? Um, yes, I will be at Outspoken at oh. 523 La Favela. Um, Sunday? That's Sunday. And uh, I that's, that's it. There's the Slam, the NOLA Slam, January 7th. Uh, that is to be announced that I actually get to be a part of it. like... Team, so like Whoa! Okay, okay, all right. Save that for the save that for the for the radio because I was gonna ask you. Yeah. We're, so we're gonna talk. Cause I don't know if you know. Come on, come on, send the booth. I don't know if you know. I studied creative writing, poetry in college. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you ever heard me spit, but um, that used to be all I did was write poetry. I've heard you, I've heard you be funny. Really, you never heard me spit poetry? Even at the really at the um her. at the uh, corner at, collective. At no, you did. Didn't you spit at Yeah, yeah, but I used to be, I used to, uh, you can have that on right there. I used to be, uh, like the poetry dude on my canvas back at Texas A&M. Uh, that's my degrees in. Um, I've only been doing comedy since 2014. I've been doing poetry since 2003. Um, so we're going to talk about page poetry versus stage poetry, uh, the art of slam and competing for poetry. Um, I actually didn't peg you for, um... Uh, slam or competing for it because I feel like uh, what you do is more about the entertainment value of it, yeah. more so than yeah. the, the competition. Yeah, I uh, I I do uh, appreciate the entertainment aspect of it for the fact that I sing as well, so yeah, I do like do. incorporating the both of those. Mm -hmm. But slam poetry, um, I yeah, it's it's a. Uh, it's me taking my actual poetry more seriously. Yeah, we got two songs, don't we? Check. Yeah, yeah, no, we got to close it just yet. No, we're ready. We're going to go sit over on our back so I know what you're saying. They still come in? I sure hope one of our, we, we usually have female co-hosts, so it ain't it ain't such a sausage fest up in here. Um, <laughs> my homegirl home Oshun is at a party, and uh, Jay Steele's on her way. Um, we got one more song we're going to play. Would you like, we got, you got the alkaline yeah, yeah, water. I'm like, I do some water. That's one of the station sponsors. Um, also, that little, uh, little Jack and Sprite, if you just wanted to sip, sip. Um, I sip, but that's me. Let me go talk to Rob Kazi. What's happening, Rob? What's up, what's up, B? How you feel, man? Man, I'm feeling good, man. Good to see you. I'm feeling good. 
Like why? We're gonna interview Diddle. you after the, the, the lady here. But what you, what how you feel, man? Talk, talk to the people. Oh. You got anything coming up? Oh uh, yeah, yeah. I actually do have a comedy show December twenty second at Cafe Instrument. Okay. Oh, that's a dinner and comedy, huh? Yeah. With Frank comedy. White. Um, Frank White. Uh, Howard Hall. Mm -hmm. Mario P. Howard Hall from Baton Rouge. She's funny. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what Mario is. Yep. You don't show up your whole. Oh, okay. Ouch. You can say that on on, on, on the Facebook Live, not, not on the radio. In fact, radio. get all of your, your curse words out now. Oh. Nigga, 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 nigga. nigga, nigga. nigga, nigga mm -hmm. All that. Titty fuck pussy nigga Titty shit. Fuck pussy nigga shit. All, all right in the asshole that. with a big old dick, yes. goddammit. Cunt. Yes, right up there. Balls up there. Say it, Brian. Say Ooh, balls up there. Say balls up there, Brian. Brian, baby. I can't. Yo, you sure? Come on, Brian. Okay, all right, Brian. Okay, Brian, say. Say nigga, 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 nigga. How many followers we have? How you say nigga, 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 there you go. Titty fuck. There you go. You just you said it three times. Well, I said it. Say finger fuck. I said it. Say finger fuck. Why? I'm trying to get you to say words. Come on, come on, man. It's breaking Brian. Finger fuck. Breaking Brian. Finger fuck. Say it. 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 Uh, uh, Man, do you know Brian is saying titty and finger fuck all in the black radio station? Can you believe him? I know he wasn't raised like this. <laughs> I'm sorry. See, we're having, we don't have any women here. We just we end up saying things like that. So if you didn't know, there's certain words you can't say on the radio. Okay. Mm -hmm. But like you can the, say it on the like Facebook the, Live. You can say it to the Facebook Live like right the, now. The, what is it? Um, can you say fuck? No. no. You can't say fuck. You can't say shit. It's like, isn't it like the, like, there, aren't there a deadly seven when it comes to curse words? Like, yeah, like it's, it's, it's like, yeah. shit, really, if you stretch it, it's a little bit more. What you got, titty fuck, pussy, nigga shit? Yeah, I was just about to <laughs> 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 uh, Can't say nigga, oh, I can't say nigga. Can't say asshole. No, that's not a part of my everyday language. Aww. Uh, yeah, so. <laughs> um, no. Can um, I say tits? Can I say boobs? Yeah, you can say tits and boobs. Yeah, in fact, we're, we're after seven, huh? We're best, we got a minute. Bats, we got a minute. I don't know what Bats said. Yeah, uh, after seven, we get we can get away with um, stuff that they can't say during the day. Okay. So you can say tits, boobs, nipples. You can say testicles. You can say clitoris, uh, but you can't say clit. You can say tits. Yeah, you can say tits on the radio. Uh -huh. Come in too. What? No, we have, I remember. Oh no, I'm tits no. Oh. we do one at a time. You know that, Malik. I know. Why I'm just checking that. Like DC, We're gonna come get you out today after this interview. Uh, mm -hmm. Is it going off or something? Hmm? Are you gonna take this? And we are back. Welcome back, you guys. Welcome back to the Miss Believe Radio Show here on WBOK AM 1230. Um, this is a show where we highlight the city of New Orleans through the eyes of uh, some creative black millennials. By the way, I'm DC Paul, the millennial Arthenio, slim waist, baby face, deep voice, number one choice, and the hardest working man in show business. There I said it. And who's this to my left? That actor got Martin Banks Bradford. I had to drop it down a few registers just to let DC Paul know. Don't be trying to out deep voice me. Mm -hmm. Don't yeah. be trying to out deep voice it's me, Banks. gonna happen for you. Stop it. Yes. Stop it. <laughs> <laughs> and who's this to my right side? Yo, this is Malik of No No Latour. I was that name. Malik, you Greek freak. <laughs> yeah, yes. Yeah. You historical geek. You're yeah. historical geek. I love it, man. Um, shout out to No No Latours. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and say it. And I even had an official tour yet. I just know this man personally. I know he knows the Everything. city of New Orleans, like the bottom of his hand. If your hand got the bottom of it, he know like where all the moles is on it and and his tour company no nola tours is the best it is man so check him out um and who that is in the booth <laughs> <laughs> shut up brian <laughs> he's so stupid he put his keep sweat voice on <laughs> <laughs> hey baby it's beautiful brian so brian what was that last song you played my man Without you, man. Shout out to Kevin Styles. He released a video for this song recently. It's pretty dope. Word. Shout out to the artists who are putting their own money, their own time, their own funds, their own energy into their own projects. By the way, the Miss Belief Radio Show only plays music by local independent artists. So if you are a local independent artist and you make radio friendly music, please. Radio friendly. Everybody's every week I get submissions that's not radio friendly. The um, N word counts as a yeah, curse word. The N word. <laughs> 
people be like, that count? Yeah. I can't say, no, you can't say that on the radio. But if you have it and it's edited, it ain't even got to be all positive. I'm, I'm going to go ahead and put that out there. It could be about whatever. As long as you edit the curse words out, <laughs> send it to us. It's a dangerous person. I know, I know. I, I said it already, so it's out there. But it could be about whatever. As long as you edit the, the bad words out, mm-hmm. send it to the misbelief at gmail.com, and we will put you in the rotation whether I like the song or not. It could be about the titty crumb anthem. We good with it. Yeah. Oh, actually, if it is about the, the titty crumb anthem, I would, I would love to put that song on in our playlist. I figured you would. Man, because Titty Crumbs has been getting a whole lot of a whole lot more um, uh, attention lately. Yeah, man. Right. Apparently, if you take your bra off and uh, and crumbs don't fall off, your titties just ain't worth it. That's what I heard. Um, okay, so this is our first. And this is what happened. We don't have none of our female co-hosts. <laughs> yeah, no, 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 no. <laughs> they sit in this. They would not let me. Say, they would not let me say these things. Um, but this is our first interview segment <laughs> here on the Miss Belief Radio Show. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome Miss Aria Monet. Hi. All right, Brian. You know what, Brian? You know what, Brian? I, I, I gave you a loan. She's so pretty. Look at her. All right, Brian. That, there it is. Oh, there it is. That, I can't, I so you needed the slow you. clap to lead up to that. Okay. That's what it was. <laughs> How you doing, Miss Aria Monet? Uh, I'm doing. Oh. You got a microphone. <laughs> uh, I'm doing all right. I'm doing. You look beautiful. Thank you. Um, Thank you. I tried. So I did. I, 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 I love it. That's how you. That's how you. Like, yep, I did this. <laughs> um, so I asked all my my guests uh, this the same first question when they interview here. Uh, do you know what a misbelief is? See, a a drink. <laughs> yeah, it's the the drink. Um, but I also know that it's um, it's a group of you, know, right? That do this. Don't shit. Oh, oh. So, so, um, <laughs> all right. So, where you um, where you from? Are you? I, do, what, what? I gotta ask it for anybody who does who always goes to the drink first. I always I make me wonder. Like, you're, you're not from here, are you? No. Okay, there we go. That's where you get slight pass. Yeah. Where you from? Uh, I guess you could say Natchitoches. Terrible, but Shreveport as well. Uh, okay. Both so, terrible, but awesome in their own way. So if you look at this picture I'm showing you, that is uh, a loquat or a japonica mm-hmm. or a Chinese plum or a Japanese plum, mm-hmm. depending on uh, depending on where you're from. You're from uptown, but most of the people in the world is called a misbelief, um, okay. and it's like it's a, a word we've been hearing since our childhood. And I had to research about why we call it that. But this is what um, the drink comes from. The drink is this flavor. The drink is pretty, pretty good. And I'm mm-hmm. about to sing some of them. That drink tastes good, boy. Google it. Um, oh, do you sing yeah, for Christmas? So, so this is what, like, the, the whole brand is uh, based and named off of. Um, so, yeah, uh, now you know. Now you're in the club. Right, Welcome, Miss Aria Monet. So uh, how long have you been in New Orleans? Since Living since January. My mom got married January 7th. Oh, shout out to your mama. I know, right? Do you like him? Uh, Oh, yeah, I like love him. him. Okay. Love him. He's, okay. he's amazing. So, yeah. <laughs> he tried to get you to slander him on live air. Well, I'm going to be like, no. Yeah, that, that's a scoop right there. I'm always going to get the scoop. <laughs> All right, cool. Um, I don't think I mentioned this in your intro, but you are a, a poet, um, a singer, and I assume a songwriter. You have you have lyricism skills do, and also yeah. vocals. Mm-hmm. Okay, cool. So, poet, singer, songwriter from uh, Nagley Streetport area. Mm-hmm. Been in New Orleans since January. Um, I think I first met you at the Jazz Market. Um, yeah, the Jazz Market was one of the first open mics that I found here. Nice. And, like, I went there and I was like, oh, my God, everyone in this city is dope. Which is, like, true, but not true. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> but, All the facts. But I went to Jazz Market and I ran into... Uh, Oh, um, mm-hmm. and I ran into dope people like DC Paul and Icon, and I've looked up to Icon as like a, a like a, oh my gosh, like person for the longest time, and now I feel like she's sick of seeing my face. Got to know Icon. It is uh, Shikandria Icon Sibley, uh, uh, one of the just uh, amazing poet from mm-hmm. here in New Orleans. She traveled around doing mm-hmm. her thing. Mm-hmm. She's going. Yep, she's one of the top in, in the world. Shouldn't have gone viral, but um, so you you looked up to her when you saw what you you saw her in your travels or in her travels? Uh, yeah, in her travels, I met her first at uh, where was it? UL, um, a friend of mine. What is UO? UL? UL. Oh, UL, uh, University of Lafayette. UL, gotcha. I'm sorry. Yeah, there was a um a, a poetry. I don't know what to call it, but she was like teaching us about poetry and stuff. Um, there, so that's the first time that I like met her in person. But before that, it would just be me, like, 
like seeing her up on stage. Mm-hmm. So it always it always felt like one of those. She always felt to me like one of those people who I would never like no matter you know like I wouldn't have the chance to like build a bond with her, which was really cool. Like being here and being able to. Yeah, because I've heard her call you one of her protégés or something like that, right? Mm-hmm. Um, and and but I I feel like you. Uh, had already done some performing and some poetry and stuff before I met you because I think when I first saw you, you came up very polished and like you were not uh, shy about the microphone. So how long have you been doing poetry? Um, well, I actually, um, if anyone know, do you, if any of you are familiar with um, Christian poetry, um, I originally started doing that in church, um, maybe um, in middle school, high school. So I've been doing it about 10, 12 years now. Okay, is that how you know my homie AJ? AJ. He's from Cuba, I think he goes by Sela. Oh, yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, I, I do know Sela. You know him through that? I know him through Shreveport. Um, there's this place called Bonton's Coffee Bar. Shout out to them. That's, that's my home in Shreveport. And um, met a lot of really dope poets there as well and got my start really just um, being comfortable on stage because um, I, I like to talk. I always like to talk, so I, I didn't think that like poetry would be that thing that um, I love the most um, because I started singing first. So I always thought that I'm going to grow up, I'm going to be a singer, I'm going to be popping, da-da-da-da, and now poetry is, is what I want to do, where I want to go. Real. Yeah. I love that. I love that. Yeah. Uh, what did you study when you were in school, may I ask? Uh, mass comp? Journalism. Okay. Uh, my I'm going to get you at the radio station. <laughs> <laughs> I know, right? Like, this, this is like my biggest, one of my biggest dreams coming true. I'm getting like, where the God works. That's cool. So uh, you recently, not recently, just yesterday, performed at Sex Live, or the Live Sex? Yes. What, 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 uh, it's, it's, it's a little bit of both. Um, uh, it's the show that our homie Deuce the Poet does. Uh-huh. Sorry. Deuce the Poet mm. performed at that show, but yeah. John LeCarbier actually produces the show mm-hmm. um, ever so often. And it's a, a like sex... Poetry, including uh, like sexual RV mm-hmm. and like just a bunch of sexual performance artists, um, but as well as some testing, right? There was some, yeah, there uh, was HIV and syphilis testing mm-hmm. um, upstairs. So they passed out condoms and things like that. Mm-hmm. There was at Cafe Istanbul last night, right? Yes, yes. Um, how long have you been writing freaky poetry? Um, <laughs> freaky poetry, <laughs> like a few months. Just a few months. <laughs> Because I've seen you do um, freaky poetry before. I mean, was... And by the way, watch your language. For the rest of your time on this episode, <laughs> but after do some freaky poetry like that, the "When Can We F?" I was like, "Man, this girl got the." Well, she has a poem called "When Can We F?" Mm-hmm. Well, I think I heard that one. "When Can We F?" Yeah. And she's got like this. If y'all don't see her on the radio, you watch on the Facebook Live, but on the radio, she's got this really innocent face and these big <laughs> doughy eyes. Like, and the first time I heard her say "When Can We F?", I was like, "Girl." <laughs> <laughs> I hate to say that be the ones, but I'm just leave it at that. Get to oh, what, what are the women? Why we got our female co-hosts to be like, no. No, I don't mean it like that. No. I mean just like I feel like in general, like people who are thought to uh um, No. No, no, for real, underestimated, like oftentimes we'd be like, Oh yeah, she must be nice, and that'd be the one that's say, always be chicks with glasses are always free. No, 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 no. I'm no. No, 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 no. I'm not saying no. that. I'm not saying that at all. I'm not saying that at all. What I'm saying is Many times, like, the people, like, okay, let's say, people always think you're so innocent. Mm-hmm. Your whole life, you've probably been treated like, you're so innocent, you're so nice, you're so innocent, you're so nice. A lot of times, Even that'd be the a-holes. The because them. they got to, when they get around people that they're really comfortable with, they get to be a-holes because everyone's always expecting them to be so nice. So whenever I hear, like, someone saying, oh, she has this innocent, I always go to, man, she's probably not like whatever. Okay. When, no, no, we won't even go into freaky stuff. She's probably just not like whatever she's always thrown her ass into be. That's all I'm saying, sir. That, that's all I'm saying, sir. I'm going to a store by him running through a whole female chess team, and I'm like, listen, that's not, that's not what, the, that's not what we're talking about. I can't, I can't run through a whole team. Not recently. My wife asked me this. Okay, um, what inspires like your 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 most your favorite work, like that you like? Because many times as artists, we we hard on ourselves. So the ones that you actually like, what inspires those? Um. I think one of the pieces that I like the most, which is surprisingly one that I have retired, um, like spitting on stage, but it was a a poem called uh, My Depression Piece, um, which is um, a piece that I um, really kind of told the story of um, where it started from, um, where I kind of started to realize who it was, um, a few statistics in there to kind of like make everyone realize like 
this isn't like a few and far in between type thing. Like there are a lot of people who deal with this. Mm. Um, so my depression piece was one of the biggest stories that I told like on a stage. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I spit that poem for the first time actually at Bon Tom's Coffee Bar at one of their open mics. And um, that being one of my most emotional pieces um, turned out to be one of my favorite because it turned out to be um, the most liberating piece that I had written. Um, so from there, I um, I believe that I, there's this love poem that I've written who is that is about one of my exes who's actually still a really good friend. So it's something that I wouldn't mind still spitting on page, on stage. So it's yeah. 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 So you mentioned you mentioned spitting on stage. Um, I a lot of folks don't know. Even though I'm silly as hell, <laughs> I studied uh, poetry in college. I was a spoken word dude. I, sometimes I got bars, and um, sometimes I got bars. And there's uh, you talked about spitting on stage. Um, how do you feel about uh, stage poetry versus page poetry? The, the act of uh, performing poetry mm. and the act of writing poetry that's not meant to be performed. Because many people don't know there's a you know clear there difference, difference clear yeah. clear difference. Mm -hmm. um, you you feel like you're more of a of a performance artist. Um, I am now realizing that I am both, um, especially with a current few, with a few current projects that I'm working on. Mm -hmm. I realized that um, a lot of my poetry, as much as I liked it, isn't really meant for a stage. It really is meant for something for you to like look at and be like, oh, wow, like I felt that type yeah. thing. Um, but I also like conveying that on a stage. But there are some things that you write like that could be shorter or that could be much, much longer than, <laughs> than, um, than you know, pieces that are meant to be performed on a stage. When I imagine uh, stage poetry, I think uh, theatrical, mm -hmm. very emotional. Um, when I think of page poetry, um, it can sometimes be... Um, more more thorough and thought out than stage poetry because sometimes with stage poetry like as a slam poet or, or someone who competes a lot of your pieces have to be like one minute two minute three minute mm -hmm. type deals but when you're reading poetry um your poetry could be uh, like a, a short story poem or something mm -hmm. like that so format. yeah could, yeah, could, yeah. Could, I, um, when i used to do it too i used to always think about like there's, like it's more cerebral when you're talking about the red the, on the page poetry. Like and that's mm -hmm. when I really try to put my deepest bars and concepts. If, you, if I know you're gonna read it, because you get to sit with it. Mm -hmm. Versus when I'm about to go, you know, perform. perform. I feel like yeah. okay, I want to catch your attention. I want to catch your eye, yeah. uh, Malik. For me, I feel like when it came to stage, I, got you. I mean, to uh, page poetry, I, I thought about the way that it looked if the person is reading it. I have some poems that um, some things that I've, I've written that the words kind of form a shape of something um, yeah. that's interesting to look at and it may not rhyme or fit a certain rhythm but like it's, it's conceptual I guess and you um, get to be more conceptual because you know someone gets to sit with it because you know sometimes live they might not catch exactly. it exactly and then I, I talk fast I spit fast so live you might miss a whole stanza because you're just, mm -hmm. just catching up but if you can read it you, you have the chance to digest it um, what you got Malik? so it's funny y'all say that because thinking back like people like some of our greatest poets like Langston Hughes is more page poets mm -hmm. like I mean, a lot of the Langston Hughes poems is not necessarily to be performed, but to actually to read and to digest. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and then like a, a part of like the performance, like who who knows if Langston Hughes had stage presence and could project yeah. his voice. But we know that he was an amazing poet. Right, yeah. right. He, he never had to step on the stage for us mm -hmm. to get to respect him. So speaking of uh, performance poetry, you said you're doing a slam coming up sometime soon? Um, if I'm not mistaken, on uh, January 7th, uh, which is the only reason that the date stuck in my mind is because that is my mom's anniversary. Um, but there is uh, the Team Snow Slam. Uh, you know, they do it the, every first Is Sunday. that when they, they have enough people qualified to join Team Snow? Snow, is that when it's Snow? Oh. Team Snow. Because still, Team Team Snow. Snow. still in my mind, like every member of Team Snow, yes. from, from, from Jay to, to even Tank, who. From the beginning, who, from, from the, the beginning, original member. Like, yeah. they're still, like, like, still, to me, mind bogglingly amazing. And I'm. It's like I'm, I'm just okay, but you got until January seventh to get over that. I know, to see I know. It's, it's on that level and a part of that team, huh? I already won that part True. of Team Snow 2018. 
I'm gonna speak it for you. Uh, it's been great chatting with you, yes, and indeed. and from what I hear, you're gonna do a performance for our Facebook Live viewer. I am. <laughs> I am. I am. Okay, well, um, you guys, if you're listening, follow me. Follow the Misbelief on Facebook. Follow me. I'm DC Paul. My Facebook is wide open. Um, check it out. Miss Ari Monet is gonna perform a little something for us, um, real quick. But I was gonna say mastermind. Beautiful Brian. What you got? What you got coming? Eat double. What you got queued up. Eat double. Oh, there's a beautiful. Obre. Come on, ain't you, ain't you from out there in the, in the Cajun country where they, where they say things like that? It's Obre. You, you, okay. Well, I, I can understand. Okay, well. <laughs> <laughs> I love Brian on yeah. the mic. All right, Brian. Well, we can't talk. We got Burgundy Street. Yeah. So. <laughs> What's the name of the song again? <laughs> Infinity by Landon Obre, you guys. Stay tuned to the Misbelief Radio Show and don't get nothing on you. The street name is Burgundy. I don't care. Exactly. Yeah. Come on. 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 Look who's in. But yes, we finally got a woman in the studio. Yes. Look at it. She back. You got to wait till you look. Wait, wait until you see the first. We've been missing. 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 I don't think anyone's not going to the chair. Oh, no, no, no chair. Kalena sat down on the floor, floor yeah. and turned the lights off and performed. But, y'all, here she is on my Facebook Live. Give it up for Ari Monet. Hey, guys. Um, so, first off, because I don't think at any point in this I've, uh, I've shouted out myself, but Ari Monet on all social media outlets. <clears throat> so, um, this first piece is uh, six simple yet not so simple steps. To loving yourself. Step one, make a list of everything that you love about yourself and then throw that list away halfway through after realizing that you can only come up with three things and then come back the next day and write line after line about how much you adore yourself and cannot wait for the growth and positive change that is to come. Step two, take care of your body. Love all of you inside and out. Go to the gym, wake up, do yoga. Watch what you eat because you are what you eat. But I ate nothing, so I am nothing. No, I just felt like nothing, but I am really something. Stop that. Keep your head in the game. Wake up, go to work, go to school, work out again, have a midday cry, midday cry, and tell yourself you are killing the game, and nothing or no one can stand in your way. Step three, fail miserably. Fail so hard that you fall into a year-long depression, and then let that depression persuade you into dying, and letting it win, and then you win, and then you realize that you are not your mistakes, and that there is a big, bright light at the end of that tunnel, and a bright future ahead of you. But then remember that you're nothing. Stop that. Try to remember that you are still depressed. No, stop that. Try to remember that you are the happiest that you have ever been, and then realize that that, too, is a lie. Step four, fall in love and then get cheated on and then do that again and then fall in love even harder and watch it just not work out and then keep being in love with the last one just to realize that you don't need anyone and then read every scripture and book that you can find to make yourself feel better and start hanging out with singles so that you can feel alive again and then drink lots of wine and watch Netflix on your ex's account <laughs> and binge watch all of the emotions that that old love brought you let the happy times breathe life into your fragile body rather than just letting your broken heart rot you are worth it you are not dead or dying you are alive step five forgive everyone and yes i do mean Everyone, that friend who left, that father that wasn't around, that friend who hurt you, forgive them all. Because you don't need to hold that pain in your heart, but above all else, forgive yourself. For the things that you did, for the things that you didn't do, for the mistakes that you made, for the times that you wish you had gone above and beyond and didn't. Because it's all okay. 
and you owe it to you, step six, love yourself. Harder and harder and harder every single day. Don't let death get that close to you anymore. You are not corpse, you are light and love is with you always. And remember, there is no better you than you, Dr. Seuss. And that will always and forever be something worth loving. I used to assume that step six was the hardest. But trust me, the hardest thing to do is love and doubt yourself when you're trying to heal. All right, Aria Monet. Now listen, I don't got time for this one, y'all. So tell them, how can we follow you on the social networks? You can follow me on all of the social networks at Aria Monet, A-R-I-A-M-E-A-U-X-N-A-Y, Aria Monet. It's Creole way. Yeah, Creole mm -hmm. way. That good old Creole Miss Aria Monet, and then January 7th, uh, the Team Snow qualifying Yes, actually, slam. Sunday, uh, as well at uh, 523 Frenchman, The Outspoken, with uh, Mario P and Shervy. And, and May Royale, yeah. isn't that the producer? Yeah, the May Royale uh -huh. produced that. So yeah, that's at La Favela. I think yeah. that's how you say it. I don't know how to say it. Shout out to <laughs> All I know how to do is fix it to <laughs> no. I don't know how to do that, so this is what I know. Up next, man, Rob Kazi is in the booth. What up, Rob? Yeah. About to get it in. Did you share this video on your Facebook? Yeah. You got all the, all the damn followers in the world. Yeah, we'll see my battery is like oh, always, right. always, always like some shit. Ten percent, always some you know shit. And I showed up a little late because I was doing a little last minute oh, Christmas window you. shopping. Okay, yeah, Christmas shopping, shopping yeah. huh? Last minute Christmas window shopping. All <laughs> <laughs> the shit I knew I wasn't doing for people. Dope. <laughs> Brian, how you feel? How many, how many songs you got left? I want you to play an extra one so I can have a little time to step outside to the balcony where I like to where I like to go, huh? One extra one is extra. This is still what? We're on two. It's still number two? Yeah. So give me one extra one, please. Alright, And then who's gonna take this camera on my hand? Yeah. And pass it on. I'm uh I'm actually gonna be at that um at that open mic. Yeah, it's next week. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. So it's gonna be cool. So um but now but um but yeah, so so with the passing on team, you know, we have a special love, of course, for Team Snow. So it since it was started at Passing On, so we have a special love for Team Snow. And all the original founder members have a great connection with the original curators at Passing On. Which most of the team is still there. We just got well, I'm gonna add on as another person who's to add on to the team. So yeah, so. So I'm excited because I know one of the first time, one of the first times that I performed at um, at Passing On. I actually covered one of Tank's songs, and that was me. And everyone was so excited. I that was, was like, you. That you, know, was I, me. you know, I sent that to her. <laughs> yes, yeah, yeah. I said, like, Tank. I was like, she was like, that is so cool. Yeah, okay, yeah, 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 okay, yeah. Like, uh, I love Tank so much. No, um, but that's a fighting word to say because, well, me and DC, that's not me and DC. You know, so, oh, okay. so we met at a Tank show, and I was like, who is this skinny dude? And I'm like, <laughs> He loved Tank more than me. Like, nah, I'm wrong. Like, nah, nah, it's not nah, nah, it ain't about to happen. But yeah, but and I'm happy that they're on their way home. So I'm just so happy that they're on their way home. I'm ready for this, this New Year's Eve show. Yeah, so. Yeah, so and yeah. if you don't have your tickets to this New Year's Eve Don't tell them because it's about to be sold out. Like, like all, when you get sold out of the show in Israel, <laughs> that's when you know. You know what I'm saying? So yeah. Let me go look at It's be hard at work. Look at him. <laughs> this man is working. They're just look at him. No, our producer went from sound engineering tech. Look at him. B, also, can you, uh, your mic, I think you need to... Bring it up? Yeah, pretty please, yeah. Well, no, but I think, is the volume up on your mic? Okay, now you just got to watch what you say, when, you know, but yeah. You bring, you bring, what you bring around saying? Yeah. What you bring around saying? No, I'm just saying, because we keep the mic off in here, because it be going down. <laughs> when, when Devin in here, so we gotta keep the mic off. Let me go. When do I have to charge this? Do I have to charge it in between? Because I need to know because. These doesn't have a charger, so it'll go out and go out. No, it don't, because we're trying to do it. Yeah, so. But yeah, but you were. So, yeah, I'm in control of the. This is. This is. This is Malik. Uh, oh. <laughs> I'm uh, I'm been uh, managing, you know, the thing, so. So you have anything else you want to tell us? Anything? Um, no. Twenty. Well, just in this yeah, next year, I really just want to uh, just make a space for myself here in New Orleans, as far as the artist community and the things that I do, and um, just you know.
know, performing on more stages, performing with, you know, doing collaborations with different artists, kind of just really like living in the dream that I saw for myself. Okay. All right. Well, you're doing awesome. You're doing awesome. Thank, Thank you. You're doing awesome. I'm so uh, awkward. <laughs> no, 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 no. Oh, no. You, you really just did a tank 2009 move. I'm really tall, real. Because she would do that all the time. Oh, I'm sorry. Look at what this what shirt. Look at this shirt. Hold I'm black gifted and whole. You know what? That is beautiful. Where did you Somebody get that from? Said black gifted and whore. No, <laughs> not a whore. Not a, even though, never mind. I'm a, you are a whore. No, dang, anyway. But no, but. um. my clothes, though. But where did you get that from? I want to say Blair Don Haley. I think this is the one I believe. The Blair is, I, I'm going to look at his website. I'm going to go, yeah, but Blair has been here two or three times. Yeah. So I think far, he's trying to move back. Oh, he should move back. You know what I'm saying? Oh, yeah, but I'm, I'm spilling tea. Come on. Come on. Oh, I'm at minute 30. Mm -hmm. Ness. Whoa. Come on, Rob. Oh, come on. Uh, yes. Yes. Oh, oh, you good, bro? The lady is oh. in the building. Oh, yeah, Miss Belize. Miss Belize. Keep, keep that up. I mean, yeah. I mean, we were talking about yeah. Titty Crumb. Yeah. We was just been talking about Titty Crumb. We've been talking really? about this, as, as manly all, things. Really? The, the things that came up with the Tubman's ass side. Oh, Facebook what? Live, show y'all yeah, love yeah. for Jay, keeping it real with Jay so. Still. We She's we in need, the studio. We need that estrogen in every episode. I'm ready when you're ready, Brian, but you better yeah. plug up because we're going to fade out. Oh, I'm sorry. And we are back. We're back, y'all. Welcome back to the Miss Believe Radio Show on WBOK 1230 AM. You tuned in live, or you listen on the WBOK app, or, or you listen on www.wbok1230am.com, or you're watching on my Facebook Live, yeah. or you're watching the YouTube video, or you listen to the podcast available at wsbelief.podbean.com and available on iTunes. Because we multimedia out here, you heard me? Yeah, All over the platforms. Um, by the way, I'm DC Paul, the millennial Arsenio. Who's this to my left? That actor guy, Martin Bats Bradford. And who that is to his left? This is Jay Still keeping it real. Where you come from? Yeah, I came from West Bank. Where were you when we oh, oh. Where were you when we needed you? I don't know, because I heard everything was just falling apart. It I fell apart. Man, did it fall mm -hmm. apart. Oh, my goodness. We, we, we That's need... dangerous. A room full of men. Yeah, no, we can't. We can't. I don't ever, can't ever, do ever that. want uh -uh. to do an episode oh. with no women ever again. I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. and, and thank you so much. I don't care where you're coming from. I'm just happy to have you here. And I know I fired you earlier, but welcome back. Um, you so kind. We need you. <laughs> Who that is in the booth? You, you still trying to keep sweat boy? On the ones and twos with the beautiful views. <laughs> Yo, Brian is usually our um, our producer um, for the, the podcast and things, but tonight, tonight he's he's man in the booth and he's doing a pretty good job at it. No, y'all missed his tagline. He said on the ones and twos with the beautiful views. Now he said that. All right, Brian. I'm gonna try to get some panties up, Miss Belief Radio. Show boss to you. Ha <laughs> ha. Um, suppose that last phone. <laughs> 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 that last. Right, you're upset about letter, dude. You were playing around your turn before that. What you playing? Still playing about Richard Rome, and it wasn't before that. <laughs> what was before that? You had one more before that, didn't you? Oh, Landon Ubre, Infinity Max. Okay, don't don't lose your patience with me now. You get fired too. <laughs> <laughs> to be told, I'm gonna learn your job. <laughs> We're here with our second interview guest here on episode 41. Oh my god! Oh, episode 41. Can you believe being canceled yet? Yet in 41 weeks? 41 oh weeks. We done dropped all type of B bombs. We done had a, a, a mother F bomb. We had the N word. We talking about crumbs on titties. But 41 episodes, and we're here with the homie. Y'all make some noise and welcome Mr. Rob Takazi, uh, social media comedian sensation himself. Oh, yeah. Give it up to Rob Takazi. What's happening, Rob? How you feel? I'm feeling good. I thought it was going to be off the way I started off all my interviews. You know what a misbelief is? Yes, I do. What is that? I do. Uh, I used to do a lot of things on the kids. Yeah, so tell me more. From yeah, where? Uh, well, I, I went to Ernest Memorial. It was cool in the heat. I used to find the best 
There you go. That, that's that's, 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 that's what happened. Your grandma. Yes. Yeah. There you go. One close call. One close call. What I got away. So I'm like the top notch misbelief thief. I heard that, man. Yes. Nice to have you here, bro. Yes. Um, I grew up with you. I went to high, to middle high school. I went to high school with your sister. Um, I've known like your family members for a long time, and then I became introduced to you as a social media comedian. Without even knowing that I knew your people. I'm like, man, this dude is funny. This dude is funny. Um, if y'all don't follow him, he's Rob underscore Kazi on Instagram. Yes. Right? That's where you have your K-A-Z-I. K-A-Z-I. That's where you kind of do your pretty much your biggest follow on Instagram, mm, yeah, right? Yeah. From videos, right? Mm. How'd you get started doing that, bro? Oh, uh, really? Uh I was I was into music at first and like uh that's my biggest passion. Yeah, my first love. Into it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh but what happened was I was like, man, I wanna, you know, find a way to promote it, you know, other than just out there, you know, kind of passing them out on the streets. I used to do a lot of that. I was like, I'm funny. You know, I used to put out of class a lot, you know, class clowns. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I was you know, just naturally that way. So I'm like, I seen a social media wave and I was like, let me just try it. I tried it and I was good at actually putting together. I surprised myself with how I started putting up the videos together, bringing my thoughts to life. And I was like, okay. And I guess like when I got that first DM that was like, oh, I think it was like a, uh, a death in the family or something. It was like, oh, it's the first time I smiled or laughed um, oh, in a wow. week, and I, that gave me chills. And that's when I started to develop that passion more for comedy. So tell me this: uh, before you, um, before I guess your first video went viral, because well, before the big boom, how many followers did you have? Uh, when I first started, I was at fourteen hundred. Fourteen hundred followers. Fourteen hundred. And then, um, and now, how many US? 79, 79.4, let me throw that on there, the, the point four, the yeah. point, <laughs> 79.4 thousand followers, yeah. uh, strictly off of like videos, um, funny videos that you, you record and edit on your own, yeah. right, you, I've seen you sometimes have like guests edit, but for the yeah. most part, like you, yeah, well for the, no, um, like 99 Point eight percent of them I edit. Um, yeah, but I mean, as far as all the, the acting. Like oh yeah, 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 bring yeah, 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 yeah. I've seen this a few times. Somebody else is in, in your video. We'll put it oh, on yeah, the yeah, 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 yeah. characters. You write your own scripts. Mm-hmm. Shout out to you, man. You we shout out to you, and you are so funny, by the way. I'm Thank a fan. You. you are hilarious. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Hilarious. Man. Thank you. My weed man is home. <laughs> <laughs> My weed man. I, I think yeah. I've yeah. seen that on the okay. Can we we'll find out? I think so, man. I gotta so go. Funny. I gotta go holler at him once I leave here. Okay, I don't think you say that. Hypothetically <laughs> speaking, uh, um, so, I'm a storyteller. I do write. That was that was you know, one of yeah, my latest yeah. work. It's, it's a metaphor. Now that we gotta get out. It's a yeah. metaphor. By the way, we tell lies on this radio show all the time. We always tell lies. So that, that was just a lie he was telling. Um, so you uh, you transitioning into stand up? Yeah, yeah. So I've, I've been doing stand up for probably about two years now. Mm-hmm. So I'm, I'm I'm fresh with it, but. Uh, How's the transition been? The transition been good, you know, just hopping on stage, getting more comfortable with it, like finding myself more and more. I think I found myself on stage, but just finding my, my, my rhythm, my comfort zone mm-hmm. is, uh, you know, where I'm at now. I'm going to say from my personal experience, man, I don't do, uh, I wish I could do videos, comedy videos, but I do uh, written jokes a lot on Facebook, and that's how I, I kind of gauge um, if a premise is funny and how people respond to it and how the punchline hits, but very seldomly do those jokes translate to stage for me. Seriously, like m- most of my stage material, sometimes something will go from Facebook to stage, but for the most part, my stuff don't translate. You find that like the stuff that you do on video translates to you doing stage. Yeah, it some, does. Yeah, well, cause sometimes I bring the videos on stage, like a character or whatnot. Or what but mm-hmm. um, if you take my page out, with, I got a lot of videos with me just talking. True. Yeah. Like, just funny just stuff. Ranting, just saying funny stuff. Funny rants. Yeah, mm-hmm. and a lot of times I gauge material like that. Like, and you can, okay. you, you can translate those rants to like to a mm-hmm. stand-up set? On stage. Nice. Like, any, mm-hmm. Nice. That's, that, that works. Yeah, I wish I could. I, I guess that makes more sense because when you're writing, um, when you're writing, you don't really get to show people the performance of it. But when you're doing videos, mm-hmm. you're already, they already see you performing yeah. it. So, yeah, that makes sense. Cool stuff, man. So what you got coming up as far as stand-up shows? Uh, well, I have a show December 22nd, Cafe Instable. That's, I wish I could just spit the address out. Please <laughs> yeah. believe me. Yeah. That, 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 Cafe that, Instable. The list is going to be okay. Yeah, <laughs> Cafe Instable. Yeah, Cafe right. Instable. So y'all Google that map search and no, all that. No, no, no. <laughs> no, 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 no. They know. Walk on over to Istanbul yeah, uh, for yeah. the third time this week. Um, <laughs> you're going to go to Dinner and Comedy. Den- yeah, Dinner and Comedy, December 22nd. Doors open at... 
7.30. Who else on that show? That's um, um, Allegedly. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we got here on the Howard Frank Hall. Frank White is the one that puts that one together, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Frank White will be home. Howard uh, Hall from Mario P. Mario P. Your whole, um, yeah, can't that. say it. Mm -hmm. uh, um, <laughs> Howard Hall from Bad, Bad Rouge. Rouge. He's yeah. funny. Who else you got on that thing? Um, is that Blue? No, not Blue. Mm -hmm. I'm looking for the fly myself, but you don't like to share things on social networks. I say I'm looking at all your Facebook. You don't no, like I mean it's it's it, it is on Facebook, huh? Is it? <laughs> okay. <laughs> <That's a question. laughs> why <not? laughs> Frank Way. Well, why y'all why you try to find something, man? What were some of your comedic influences that made you want to do it? Oh, um, that you might even look too still and be like, man, I'm, I'm gonna take some of that and flip it. Uh, I really like Eddie Murphy. Word. Eddie Murphy. I can see that. Can, Can you? See that? I feel that vibe, yeah. Mm -hmm. I um, Eddie Murphy is one. Uh, probably a more recent one is uh, Cat Williams. All right. Cat mm -hmm. Williams, definitely. Uh, Mike Epps. I mean, a few of them. A few of them definitely inspired me to, you know, but I think really just jumping out there, starting comedy, like I said, it was, it was like really just trying to get my music out there. Mm -hmm. So I wasn't like, oh, like, all right, my these comedians, I'm about to be a comedian. It was like, man, I'm about to just do some funny stuff. To get my music out there, then I want to fall in love with comedy. Mm -hmm. right. By the way, so dinner and comedy is Friday, December twenty second. Cafe Istanbul is twenty three seventy two Saint Cloud Avenue. I never knew. Yeah. <laughs> um, I never knew that address. <laughs> but headlining that night is Howard Hall, featured comics of Mario P. That boy Brady. Well, I did a show with Brady in the Brady. East. Um, and then of course the man Rob Kaiser himself. Tickets are twenty bucks for general admission. Fifty bucks for the VIP includes Ooh. dinner and a table for two, as well as a funny comedy show. Check that out. That's December twenty second. Doors at six. Show at seven. Dinner and dessert. That's gonna be pretty good. Stop Ooh, taking that's your, gonna be yeah. nice. Yeah. Ooh. Ooh. Who, who cooked? Right. Nice Stop little, taking your girl to the same movie. You hear I me? Mean? Come right. see some live Let's performance. Get some comedy, What's up, man? All y'all black, so yeah, some support some yeah. black local and comics. And man. shout out to Pralees. They will be catering at night. Oh, oh my God. Yeah. it's going down, man. You know Pralees? Oh, my God. Okay, that's what's up. So you talked about your, your mm. music, man. And the last time I talked to you, you said you, was, you had a, a, some mixtapes and some albums that you was coming out with mm -hmm. soon in 2018. Yeah. Okay, definitely. any of that radio friendly? Because, you know, we um, only play... I mean, I would like definitely have it, you know, I can definitely have it edited. To the version. <laughs> yes, I like, I like, yeah. they like, what may not be, no, that's not what I do, but yeah, I can do it, you know. Like, what you need? Like, <laughs> yeah, I mean, but I might have uh, a few songs on that that just not too, you know, cussy. Yes. <laughs> cussy. So, wait, how would you describe your music style? Cussy. <laughs> nah, 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 it's not, um, I'm, I'm a cussy in my, in my comedy. Definitely. Clearly. Uh, yeah. But in, in my music, I tend to cuss a little less, but um, it's, it's definitely um I would say lyrical and and uh, a lot of substance. So when you have when you select the, the song from the album that you want as the single, the one that, that you want for the radio, send it to me. Make sure it's clean. Mm -hmm. It ain't gotta be. It could be about whatever you want it to be about. But send it to me. I would love to put that in the rotation because um I mean we all multi talented here. Um, we are creators. I stand by. I don't think there's any artist that only does one right. thing. We, we've been saying that. I don't Ari, Ari, Ari Monet, she's here. She mm -hmm. sings. She writes poetry. Um, I'm an actor. I'm a comedian. I host. I write poetry. Brian sings. He writes. He makes films. He's a director. Clearly, he's now a it's DJ. Like, yeah. um, <laughs> right. You know, for like all artists, if this is the X Men, we all mutants and we yeah, all got man. our own list. Yeah. Yeah. You know I'm, I'm all saying? for being a renaissance things. man and like using all of your gifts. Mm -hmm. So I right. see you doing it, Rob. So when can we look forward to this this music coming up? Oh, uh, I don't have a date. I actually just start yeah. working on it. I'm, not, I, I'm, I'm talking about like, yeah, let's let's go forward and do it. Yeah, no, I'm definitely going for. I'm in the. I'm not. I'm in the studio. I believe I'm, it. I'm in, I'm in the studio We're now. In the studio. You know, so <laughs> <laughs> my dude said he don't want to give you a date and then be uh, lying okay, to you. Well, yeah, yeah, and yeah. I, so I, I, I don't have a date because I just start working on it. Okay. So I can't. You know what I'm saying? Uh, but I am working with um one of the producers I'm working with is KC the producer. Shout out to him. Okay. Uh, one of the hottest producers right now in the city. So, Wait, we don't know what I've never I mean, got well, bars. Hey, uh, <laughs> <laughs> but look, man, so I would love to have you back on the show um, as a musician, as an artist, mm -hmm. when you come through with like with some music. You can even do a performance on my Facebook Live. Yeah. I mean, it's petty compared to your viewership. You do a performance for your own Facebook Live, and then you just go viral, and then you just be famous again. Um, but my Facebook Live ain't too shabby. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it, it all comes down to there's always somebody that you ain't never seen you before. Yeah, man, and, and that's what the misbelief is about, just giving people a platform 
platform to show like the talented folk we got here in the city um, and, and where can we check you out? Yeah, and, uh, well, first of all, all followers matter. <laughs> yes, yes, <laughs> yes. Every single one of them. But where, where, can we, where can we follow you and check you well, out? Well, um, on Facebook is uh, Rob Kazi. On Instagram is Rob underscore Kazi. <laughs> and uh, YouTube. Now, YouTube is something I'm, um, I'm starting, you know, uh, because I, I saw you have bands yeah. on YouTube, but you told me that fans. Yeah, made actually, shows. fans <laughs> put together stuff on oh, wow. on YouTube. Right. Yeah. So I mean, I have stuff on YouTube if you want to go check it out. Mm -hmm. But uh, I didn't post that stuff. <laughs> <laughs> so it's By the way, so you got, a, you got an official Facebook page, Rob Kazi the comedian, K A Z I. Yes. yes. Um, if, if you got too many friends, then you can follow you your official page. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Um, I like how you don't update it, but it's all good. Uh, He's so <laughs> petty, <laughs> <to> me, bro. <laughs> <Hey>. <laughs> Oh, man. So, so do follow the homie Rob Kazi on all social networks, man, and just well, I look forward to you coming back and yeah. bringing some music to us. And then December twenty second, Cavi Istanbul dinner and comedy, right? Yes. All right, man. Good to have you here, bro. Stick around. We're gonna have some more fun for the, the next hour. You'll be here. We'll do. Cool. I was gonna leave and do some more Christmas window shopping, but I'm gonna um. <laughs> Look at all the stuff I knew. I, I know I'm not getting. He looks like he could Christmas, really? Christmas shop lifting. No, like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh all right, Brian, what you got queued up for, us, beautiful Brian's? All oh, right, right. Oh, I love Ray yeah. Ray. I saw Ray last night. Uh, just stay tuned to the Mental Leap Radio Show. Don't go nowhere and don't get none on you. Hey man, Rob, how the hell's the name? I was three of them. Oh, you smile. Hold it. Yeah, looking like it. Hey, you know, I need to. Hey. Get your, your session ready? Mm -hmm. Okay. I'm gonna get my session ready too, man. <laughs> 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 Brian, come get this camera. I don't know what I'm doing. That's okay. Follow me, camera. Everybody leaving out. We're about to go. Here is hey, where you going? Hey, 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 where hey, you going? On? What's hey, poppin'? How you doing? I'm doing all right. I think they may want you may want to interact with me. Oh, okay. Okay. He said okay. Okay. All right. Yes indeed. What's up, bro? You didn't meet Ari and wanna get him down. Mm. Huh? Oh, yeah. Yes, you didn't call me. I was out. trying oh, to get some moves. You got to put some on the spot. That's all that. Did y'all meet already? Yeah. yeah. Okay, Show him that thing she was doing there. Hey again, love. Hi. I'm so sorry I missed your interview. I heard it, though. It was really good. Really good. My cheeks are burning. She had a dope I, In moment. real life, I'm like, I was actually real nervous. Really? I get nervous about everything I do until too. it happens. I do too. I can't talk. I get nervous every time I get on stage. Yeah. How you doing, sir? I'm fine. That's what's up. up. Thank you so much for coming. Say what? Uh, oh, you stole it from your mama. mama. Yeah. Word. Time, but I, I believe it too. Mm -hmm. I'm blessed and happy. If I ask him, I'm like, how are you? He's like, I'm good. But I'm always good. I'm like, I'm mm -hmm. Wow. I'm trying to feed off that energy. synergy. Like, yeah. that is so real. Like, just vibes and, and by what I do, I can't, I, I don't ever want to walk around like, just feeling down. Like, so, I crack jokes and sometimes, and you won't even know, I might be dealing with something like deep. But, right. And you would never know. Like, only, only people that's real, real close to me can be like, I was up, I could just finish cracking a joke. What's up? Yeah. And it's it. Fuck. <laughs> you know it. Some, some, I think some some people around me can kind of tell just from my energy because my energy changes depending on what I'm in or what I'm going yeah, through. Yeah, definitely. So then they'll kind of be like, like, hey, what's up? But not many people like here just because I haven't like really built those mm -hmm. relationships yet. A lot of relationships here are fairly new. Yeah. But like in in other places, like people that I went to college with or stayed in Shreveport, my old roommates, like they would be able to notice. Like something's wrong with you. Like Dio walk up to me and be like, "What's wrong with you?" And I'm like, yeah. Yeah. crying. Like, mm. so yeah, yeah, some well. people kind of just know. But yeah. other than that, for the most part, a lot of people, uh, when they first meet me, they're like, "Oh, you got like this great energy about mm -hmm. you. You just seem inviting." That's what I like to give off. But you know, sometimes yeah. I have my days. So. Mm -hmm. yeah. I have my days, but I fight through it though. Yeah. Is uh. 
I think what, what made me start fighting through it because I went to McDonald's one time and I had a day like that. I was just like down and then a dude behind the register was like, oh man, Brock Collins, can I get a picture of this and that with the woo? And I was like, I'm rolling out right now and this and that with the woo. And I got my food and I'm going to go sit down and like I'm eating and the whole time I'm eating he just like looking, he looking down like, so I was like, fuck, like I looked up in the dude, whatever going through his mind and I'm like, so I get back, I'm like, hey, we, you know, we can take a picture. He stopped in the middle of ringing somebody up and come and take the picture with me. So I was like, I understand, like, how, you know, what they do for other people. So, and that's the whole reason I do comedy. Like I said, the, the DM about the girls and, oh, what such and such happened in my family's the first time. So that was what really drew me into it and then seeing, you know, just changing people's vibes, people's moods. Like, and I think one time I was, uh, I was going through it. Like, I was depressed, like, bad. And I was sitting there and I must have played on my phone for like an hour. And I realized within that hour, like I was looking at funny videos and I was just laughing. And I realized I didn't think about one problem and I just forgot about everything within that hour. So I'm like, dang, so when I, I'm like, damn, this is what I'm doing for people? So it's like, I don't care how I'm feeling, like I, you know, try my best to make people laugh. I almost feel obligated now. Yeah. But it's not pressure, it's no burden because I love it. So it is what it is. That's what's yeah, that was so That's dope. That's what's so I, I actually, um, uh, Trey Mac. But that that's kind of that's how he feels about comedy. That that literally is just something that like he is, mm -hmm. and and just being around people that what they do is just like who they are. Like yeah. poetry, like that's me. That's what I do. Singing, that's me. That's what I do. So to be around other people who care that much about their craft, to like be around like like I got it to like see Tink doing stuff on yeah. stage or like like see Pell out doing, you know, do shit with these mm -hmm. music that just came out. And it's just like it's being surrounded by stuff like that, it really like keeps my energy like like up rather than being around people who just not trying to do nothing with their life, who kinda just like uh, kinda just go on with the day to day with you. But now, after experiencing like people like really going out there and getting it, like like just being around that vibe, like kind of. See, I think I'm uh, <laughs> like I like I always say I'm the definition of comedy. I am comedy because. I think I'm fucked up with it. So I, I find like all the type of shit to laugh at. Like, I don't find it to laugh at. Yeah, so so you would just. I don't believe in taking life so serious. And, you know, there's serious moments, definitely. You know what yeah. I'm saying? But just life is don't. Cool. Yeah, just some people take life too too serious, and that's where a lot of depression and stress come from. So, man, I one time I. I ain't gonna lie, I one time laughed at a funeral. I didn't laugh at the, you know what I'm saying? It was my own well, funeral, was... and it's like an uncle I was close to. But I'm sitting there, and, like, <laughs> this lady had this crooked wig, and her nigga was just, and I just, I saw that. I saw that. <laughs> and I felt bad, I'm like, damn, why am I laughing right now? I'm supposed to be, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, so I, 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 I laugh at all. I love dog Humor. Yeah, dog humor. Yeah, but like, you gotta find those little moments yeah, and yeah, messed yeah. up and things. Because yeah. if you don't, if you don't find those little moments, you will go crazy. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Let me talk about these earrings, Queen. I love them. I got these. Um, so cute. At Essence. Uh, oh, really? One of the vendors. At, uh, at I would like shout her out if I could remember. Yeah, they have so many though. They have so many good vendors that come down here for Essence Fest. So many yeah, I, dope jewelry. This is, this is this is my jam. And I, if I if I tone it down with like my look as a whole, I always have a statement earring. Yeah, um, that's kind of kind of my jam, especially since I'm like really. Cute. You guys have uh, But you always looking gorgeous. Hold up, let girl. Me. You always popping. Let let's. With this hair, though, and th what this? I'm too silly ooh, for this. Oh, 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 too silly. <laughs> but yeah, always gorgeous. She's so sweet. What and you want to so say beautiful. to the people? I don't know what I want to say to y'all. How y'all doing? <laughs> That's it. <laughs> I've been in Christmas traffic all day. Oh yeah. But wasn't even trying to like shop, just like, just because. <laughs> It's, it's, it's inconvenient when you when you're not in it for like the purpose, like the intended purpose I of the traffic. 
But that's like, it's isn't so that worse? worse? Yeah, yeah I'm worse. like, that's that's worse. Yeah, but I mean, I could take it on that one day, like prepare myself. I'm like, I'm about to go through hell. Yeah. It's gonna be some bullshit. But like, just to spread out, like trying to do like normal things. Yeah. Kind of it's kind of like mentally preparing for like Black Friday, yeah. which is like. I don't do Black Friday, but <laughs> like when I was younger, I used to be like, oh my gosh, Black Friday, I got to go catch all the sales, we got to go, we got to go, and now I'm just like, oh, y'all got that out, Cyber, now, 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 Cyber, now Cyber Monday, now I'll do Cyber Monday, but actual, like, go out to the store on Black Friday, and get trampled over by some 300 pounds, for a TV, because I'm not about to... I'm trying to find stuff. What my, these my, <laughs> <laughs> I feel like a lot of these people couldn't on their own pick up a whole TV, but just right. the adrenaline from Black Friday, they picking up whole TVs. Yeah, and they got all the videos of people like knocking each other out. Yeah, I'm just like, and, and breaking breaking the glass windows of the stores, and I'm like, I will kill you. I don't have my anxiety is too bad for that, Mine though. Too. Like, I would, I would like stop and like sit on the floor and like. <laughs> In the fetal right. position, and like it's it's too many people, it's too much anger, intenseness, and animosity. DC is back. DC is looking like a person's arm. Beautiful. None of this is Christmas. This is yeah. Kwanzaa. Just, Wait, that's not a tree on your shirt. <laughs> no. Oh my god! Oh, I it was a tree. Bags. Oh. Do y'all want to mm. record? Can I make myself useful and record? Cool. I'm going to make myself useful. Oh, yeah. Shine. Bright. Yo. Welcome back to the Midbelieve Radio Show here on WBOK AM 1230. We're live. I'm DC Paul, the Millennial Arsenio. And who's this to my left? My stage left. This <laughs> Jay still keeping it real, y'all. We're so glad to have you in here estrogizing. I'm so happy to Estrogizing this whole studio up for us. Mm -hmm. is, is that a word? Can we estrogize? Can it's we? a word today, yeah. That, I'm may be, that may be the title, the, the title of this episode. Estrogizing the studio. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> and who's that to your right? That actor guy, Martin Bass Bradford. Uh, wish you had, wish you had. Well, yeah. Who that is in the booth? Oh, I'm sorry, wait, I'm sorry, who says to my right? <laughs> this is Malika Nuno Latour. Malika Nuno Latour. How you feeling, Malik? I'm doing all right. What you did today, man? I heard you was taking pictures with a black Santa, but not the black Santa. Yeah, he wasn't the oh, Santa. Yeah, man. Like, you know, <laughs> I, got his, I started to put on clothes and go where he was at, and I was like, wait, that ain't... That ain't Charlie Sam. That ain't the same man that was wearing the umbrella hat on Canal Street. No, that's not oh, Santa. Santa. Oh. No, don't do chocolate Santa that. Mm. No. Uh -uh. You know that man wearing the umbrella hat on Canal Street on the off that season. Is. What else does he do besides drive a bus? He got he got all day to, to, to preach. He's a twin, word. isn't he? <laughs> I heard he was a twin. What? I, I didn't hear that. I didn't yeah, hear that I heard either. chocolate Wait, Santa one? was a twin. Really? Yeah. So I mean, it could be two chocolate Santas. And they just... They can switch out on this. We wouldn't even know. know. <laughs> but I, was, I, got a, I, I respect you. I was a chocolate Santa the other day. Yeah. You feel me? Oh, mm. My back, keep going. I know, I know, because I never did who that is in the booth. <laughs> I'm going to it. I didn't even forget about you. Who that is? Brian learned how to press the buttons and do the board thing. Uh, uh, five say, minutes? Say, man, no, no, an hour and 13 minutes ago, because we've been doing the show for an hour and 13 minutes now. <laughs> he learned it on the spot and he's doing beautifully, Brian. Uh, what was that last song you played, my man? I love that song, You Delight by Karen Green. And before that, what was that again? Oh, oh, it's I'm something about that mic. Yeah, yeah man. man. <laughs> you got confidence behind the mic. I might not see you. You're trying to get panties through the radio show, huh? <laughs> I'm ashamed and proud at the same time, man. And thanks for doing what you do. I'll close that door. Um, and then this segment here is called What's Going On Out Chip? What's Going On Out Chip? You heard me? Uh, this is where we talk about local talking points, news, events, topics, whatever interests us as black creative millennials here in the city. By the way, the number is 504-260-9265. If you want to call in and talk to us, you want to tell us what's going on out here, um, or you just want to just want to rap with us, mm -hmm. the, uh, the phone lines is open, you heard me? Um, I'm going to start with you, Malik. 
What's going on out here? Man, I gotta start. What's going on out here with the best news that done hit the city? That John F. Kennedy Senior High School will be back effective the 2018-2019 school year official by the Orleans Parish School Board that decided to make Lake Area John F. Kennedy Lake Senior. Area on, um, on, on Paris. Paris? Yes, it will now be John F. Kennedy Senior okay. High School. Oh, wow. The Blue and Gold, the Cougars That's are a back. Campus too. Um, you know, other schools kind of... You know, they're like, how do you get their school back? Well, we was determined we never gave up. You know, Cougars, Cougars never die, you know what I'm saying? So, yeah, I was, I was wondering your, your opinion about City Park taking the old space up. So I'm glad right. y'all have, y'all yeah. y'all still, y'all, the Phoenix ri has risen, look. But right. here's the thing, I don't know if it really counted if you were in a new location, right? Like, we graduated from McMaine. Mm -hmm. If McMaine moved to a different location, which would be like... We we back, <laughs> you know the Mustang <laughs> right. Mustang can't be stopped. Yeah, this is move. petty DC episode, oh, man. Keep going. Well, 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 I'll put it like this. I wouldn't feel the same. <laughs> Thirty five ain't Tremaine no more. You know True. what I'm saying? Right. So I'm just saying with the. Okay. I mean, with all the schools, but they got are, a whole new campus though. But, but all the schools are somebody else's <laughs> elementary school. <laughs> Stop it. No. Well, 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 we never heard McMaine blow anybody out, but you know what I'm saying? In education, we used to yeah, all the we, time. We was the number two high school in the school. Yes, man, that's true. That was small. And also, we, we, we kept our same location. See, bro, we, um, when me and DC went there, we used to... I had to take a test. We ain't, we ain't <laughs> much. Yeah. And we ain't never lost our lease. Oh, hey, oh. oh. Y'all just, just got bats in your school. Oh, yeah. <laughs> we, we, got, <laughs> oh, yeah, we just got bats in school, man. I, I ain't gonna lie to you. McMain, last time I saw it, it looked like somebody needs to rinse the school off with a hose pipe or something. But what's messed up is, is they got up. a whole new building built behind it that's immaculate, like yeah, a gym yeah, or something. Like auditorium or gym. Man, something, it's beautiful, yeah, but the same new, front. Same and I mean, I just need some some stucco or something. Malik, Malik, don't feel bad. I didn't even know McMain still existed. <laughs> 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 of course, McMain still exists. They got uniforms now. Legend, <laughs> they with yeah. the black and black and gold plaid pants. Oh. Oh. oh man! Oh no, but no, they started that my senior. Year. You were gone. No, no, no. Right no, when when, oh, when, I, when, when I was a senior. Um, it was optional. For optional. Us. Uh -huh. It was mandatory when I became right. a senior. It was that we we sometimes used to wear the uniform. We didn't feel like getting fresh. Um, so that's what it was. Yeah, because we because we, we knew about you know having to be fresh regularly. Yeah, man. At that school, because seven to twelve with uh, free dress, that was a trip. But one thing I do say is this, though, I appreciate the fact of not having to think about. What I'm aware every day once we did get the uniform True. situation. That, yeah, that, that made stuff so easier. much simpler in the morning. I mean, you know, but for millennials, you know, high schools in New Orleans are, you know, just a staple. And to have the staple high school back, whether it be Meg, Maine, Douglas, I think the people came in with the charter school thing. Mm -hmm. They didn't understand how people from New Orleans, like we, the way we rep our high schools is totally different mm -hmm. than any other place in the world. Yeah, so high true. schools mean a lot. Yeah, right. right. So I, I, I was being petty, Ooh, but shout, that's out, shout true. out to the kids. That's very true. Shout out to, shout out to the kids. Because that charter, uh, we don't know them charter people. No, I still don't know. Them. I really don't. Yeah. I still don't know the charter school. Kids be saying, I go to this school, I'm like, ah, Wait, what, is, what is that? Right. <laughs> you know, if you went here in the late 90s, early the 2000s, um, before the hurricane, and you'd be named up in these schools, it's almost like a little rapper. It's like, <laughs> 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 who's little? Who's little Lake Area? <laughs> <laughs> I want to see my child now. Little Lake Area. That's what's going on out here. Uh, Jay Steele. Yeah. What's going on out here, baby? I'm going to keep it real, real quick. Keep so it real. I want to talk a little bit about Hollywood South. So y'all know a few years ago, Hollywood South was popping. We had movies, mm -hmm. TV shows, all kind of stuff. And it's starting to pick up a little bit, but they said it's getting a whole lot better now. Um, recently, Brian Wright of Silver Screen Rentals, who's a production company that uh, rents out and leases out different items for movies, was saying that they're so booked up that they are having to... They're overbooked, basically. So they were saying that coming into... Baton Rouge and New Orleans next year, they're going to have about 15 productions, including Queen Sugar, of course, mm -hmm. NCIS, um, Preacher, and there's also the first, Preacher. there's Gambit, and there's a Tom Hanks movie that's going to be filming in Baton Rouge about World War II. Nice. Um, so hopefully things pick up from here. I mean, I still personally feel like it'll never quite be where it was before. Don't say never, no. Tank scratch. Let me, let me rephrase that. Not never, but... I think it's gonna take some time. Yeah. I think it's gonna take some time. And elements. Right. Do, do they have some type of office in um, City Hall that 
campaigns to get films to be developed here in New Orleans. That's the New Orleans Film Commission. Yeah, because I think they should have some type of, that kind of get like, persuade them to come and film here in the city. Yeah, and a large part of that is the tax incentives. And when that got screwed up, that kind of messed up everything, which is why everything is localized or centralized in Georgia now. Yeah, man, because Louisiana has been called uh, the sportsman's paradise, right? Um, and I've heard that you can find, no matter what you want to film, you can most likely find it in in Louisiana. Not mm-hmm. desert, right? But you can find something yeah. that would look kind of jungle-ish. You right. got swamp, you got uh, grassland, you got... Uh, city escapes. Right. Uh, it, it was a trifecta. Shreveport, New Orleans, and Baton Rouge. They used to just that was making us to like for mm-hmm. a period of time. Like Jay still said, we was the number one spot mm-hmm. making movies. Period. We even beat right. California yeah. in a couple, yep. mm-hmm. a couple, a couple of years Did straight. Have moved back here. Yeah, man, it was crazy. Fun. So he said, jungle, deserted, all that's in the east. Like Atlanta basically took. Bro, you know how that, that was a personal attack. You know what I mean? He's beast. I mean, even petty all night. Okay. Well, right. right. like you know, Atlanta basically took out Blueprint and they flourished off yeah, of they it. Did. So they did. it's good to hear that more, more, more so movies. So hopefully are picking that up. trend will continue because it's been real. It's been very good. Because they had an article on that same, um, that same spot like two or three years ago talking yeah. about how they there's been a, a deficit. They was yeah. not getting no business. So it's and good they to hear. Had a couple of studios closed because of that. Yes, indeed. So. Man, all my friends about to get made. Major roles in studio films. Down south, man. We're speaking. That's what's going on out here. Our film industry is going to jump back up. Bats. Yeah. What's going on out here, my man? Well, um, Reggie Bush won't come back. I heard that. You oh, feel yeah. me? He said he's ready to retire, and he said he won't retire with the Saints, man. He misses us and all that. The former number two overall pick by the New Orleans Saints spoke on NFL Network Friday as he wanted one more shot at the NFL this year, but he's ready to walk away. I'm done. Yeah, I'm done. I said it. It's not breaking news. I've been saying it. I said it all season long. I said, listen, if I don't play this year, I'm going to retire. Bush, 30, damn, you're just 33. Bush, 33, last played in the NFL for the Buffalo Bills in 2016. He spent his first five seasons in the NFL with the Saints, rushing for 2,090 yards and 17 touchdowns. His biggest impact came in a passing game, hauling in 294 passes for 2,142 yards and another 12 touchdowns. He also had several key moments in the Saints' run to their Super Bowl title in 09, despite nag- fighting nagging injuries throughout the season. So, you know... He, he's seeing that we're looking good again. <laughs> and he's like, you know what? I want to leave. I want to leave. By, you know, he's going to do some gallus to us is what it sounds like. Yeah. Since when do you care about sports? I just, hey, it was a story. It was true. It was a story. You, you, come on, man. I, just, I tried to put on the character because we already, come on. We're we in our manly spirit and stuff toilet. right we now, man. We fix right, toilets right. and we talk about sports right. now. Sports, beer. Sports. Women. Sports. sports. Beer. No. Sports, mm-hmm. beer, women. No. Oh, no, no, no. Just because, just because, just because we, we haven't now. said it yet in, 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 in the, the, the 8 o'clock hour, titties. <laughs> Titty crumbs. T- okay. I wish they could see Jay Steele's face right now. She <laughs> <laughs> just came in the saying, look. Live. My name is DC Paul uh, on the Misbelief Facebook page. Check this out because the, the in studio antics are much funnier than what you hear on the radio. I promise you that. Uh, Malik. Mm. What's going on out here, man? Do you really want to know what's going on there? Tell me what you got. 19 counts of indict- indictment oh, by the federal oh, government. Man. Yes, you know me. I got to throw it out there. Somebody was going to say that. I got to throw it out there. You talking about Urban? I'm talking about that New Orleans ambassador, that jazz trumpet playing. Man, you step light. That library director. I like him. Mm. You step light. Um, no, nah, you know, honestly. He's a friend of mine now. Talk- so, Urban Mayfield was indicted um, this week. 19 counts of indictment. Um, I actually, I like Urban Me too. I've, I've met him through several ways. He actually, he went to join him Kennedy Senior High School. He's he a worked, friend of the stations. He's a friend of the station. He worked, he worked at Dillard University. Um, so I've never had a bad encounter with Urban Mayfield. However, um, you know, you got to do right by people's money and people's jokes. So, you know, my feeling about this is I feel for his family and the families involved, especially during the holiday season that they got to go through this stressful Mm-hmm. At you know all of this pressure, so I just feel for his family. But nineteen counts, this is that's that's serious. I think yeah. he got more counts, counts than Ray Nagin, but you ain't hear that from me. We hit the record the most times that fans been hit in any episode. Oh God! I'm surprised that he was on so many charges. Yeah, yeah. Oh, God. I was read. Uh, uh, I hate to I hate to indulge in this type of conversation, <laughs> but I was reading about um, some of the, the uh, amenities he was taking, like uh, uh, staying at the at the uh, 
Ritz Carlton when he went to yeah. uh, New York City for like um, official things. So he paid nineteen thousand dollars for a mm -hmm. trumpet. Mm -hmm. He spent fifteen hundred dollars in New York on one breakfast. On breakfast. What? I just I just wanted to believe that so much of that. Man, I wish I, I wish you would have been friends earlier. I'd have been like, yeah, let's travel, Herb. You got it. You buying trumpets and things? I don't even play instruments, but buy me a trumpet too. I, so I'm like, man, these people be stealing stuff and they do the most. I'm like, you gonna steal skim? Right. Not saying I'm right. saying go steal. I'm saying don't right. steal. You know, if you gonna steal, let it be petty cash. You know what I mean? Like I'm gonna pay. You know, buy buy a bag of weed or something, but don't be right. Like, I'm gonna buy a giraffe and a gold encrusted book. A usual city credit card to buy lunch or turkey. Oh. Some, <laughs> some so. <laughs> oh. no, 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 no. oh. But I mean, and what you just said is so New Orleanian. Like we'd be like, hey, just just pick a little. Oh, right. <laughs> right. Right. That's, that's, that's probably how all of those Man, politicians yeah. started. Like now, all those politicians started when they, you know, the ones that go down because for, for whatever reason, all our politicians just, just decide yeah, to steal money. Down, know, man. They probably started with the skim, and then that skim started getting. Get... Oh. Well, well, well. I do know, regardless oh, of what, what happened, I was clear with him. I say nothing about OT. I, I do got a great musical facility out of it. That's all I can say, and I love going there. Oh, so. I love the jazz. <laughs> <party. I know. laughs> and, uh, by the way, I kind of what's going on out here. <laughs> Every Wednesday night, the jazz. <laughs> 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 Thanks, Marcus. Me and the band Cool Nasty, we host the dopest event you could do for free uh, every week here in the city. Uh, doors at 9, show at 10 is free mm -hmm. at the Jazz Market Corner of O.C. Healy and MLK. Um, it's a lot of fun. Um, I got another what's going on out here. Tonight, Big Frida's Holiday Bounce Around the Block is happening right now until 1 a.m. on St. Claude. Um, it's like the third... Third or fourth year she's done this, but um, what they do is they start at the art garage on St. Claude, mm -hmm. and then like the High Hole Lounge, I believe Siberia, and all of the um, all of the, the venues on that block are hosting some type of holiday thing. Mm -hmm. What is Siberia? Um, Siberia is where I do comedy on Mondays on St. Claude. It's right across from okay, it's right across from <laughs> the Always Lounge you plug where I do comedy on right? Saturdays. You heard me. Um, but it's, these are these are spots in all in the same block on on St. Claude okay. um, on St. Claude. And um, it's a bounce around a block. We got Big Frida, Sweet Crude, Partners in Crime, um, Miss T, Miss T, Delish the Goddess, Hot Sizzle. You heard me, Roxy Larue, who's a, a very sexy burlesque performer who who books me quite often. But um, they, all this is happening at the Art Garage, High Hole Lounge, Siberia, and the Always Lounge tonight. It's bounce, rap, punk rock, burlesque, and a whole lot more. Happening right now, so um, if you're looking for something to do after the show goes off, mm -hmm. um, free, to, free to bounce around the body until so 1 a.m. on St. Claude. Free to give a good show. With Hell yeah, DJ free to give a real good Ascendance show. And then everybody DJ grabs their angles. So, you know, I I, I catch the wall at a big free to show. I, I wasn't wide open. I, I mean, that's that's what you would have Harriet Tubman decide. If she went to the big free to show, she'd probably still, bust it wide open. We still talking about Harriet Tubman busting it wide open. I mean, we just we are not gonna talk about. Mother Harriet Tubman busting We're already talking about her getting that beef for Harriet. How many times are we going to say the word titties? I, I because we you. just found out we can say it on the radio. I tell you so we got to use it up. We're not even really I tell you sure. one thing. <laughs> we, I, I will tell you one thing. Okay. I tell you one thing. What you got? Harriet Tubman probably had titty crumbs. <laughs> 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 Harriet Tubman took her bra off and crumbs fell out. I don't even want to talk about slave time titty crumbs. <laughs> right? I know. I know. It's like cornbread crumbs and like... That's chitlin crumbs. I know. Then it gets dark and I want to tell those kind of jokes. So let's get left. Let's do the next thing. She probably had greens in there. Mm -hmm. yes, yes. I'm sorry. If your, if your titty crumbs include collard green juice, I think you need to you need to just wear a new type of bra. If we had chillings, we say chillings, you'd be happy. Yeah, I'm, I mean, I'm, I'm into chillings. Yeah. <laughs> Next. I'm, I'm scared of getting cancer. At this Next. Time, so, man. Let's, let's, let's keep it moving. Uh, Bass, what's going on out here, man? Give us, give us one that's not about titties. That's not about the. Okay. Um. So. Um. Uh. Okay. I have one right here, man. There's, I just, it's dark, Brad. Like, we just were talking all this stuff. Now That's I'm thinking, fine. Oh, no, 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 we're going to do that. I'm not going to do that one. We're not going to talk about the, the hair hand man who molests kids and evictions. Yeah, no, let's so, not. Man, because he really was on a level of, like, okay, I won't evict you if you suck my, that's like, dog, for real. That's what we had in 2017. Yeah, that's some hair hand land, landlord. Oh, but, the bank that was doing that? Harahan, does that count? No, 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 that's not the West Bank. No, no, that's just white people. So anyway, new images released of women suspected in Mandeville, Victoria's Secret Robbery. 
And yeah, they got these three women out here. Apparently, they uh, police on Friday released new surveillance <sighs> images of two of the five women suspected two five women suspected of stealing fifteen hundred dollars worth of mer merchandise from a North Shore Victoria's Secret store. Right. Tips have tips have poured in <laughs> 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 regarding the robbery suspects. Like, I know who stole the panties. Snitching. Who used mace and a stun gun yeah. on three store employees who tried to intervene. Is it that serious? For some panties. I mean, the five <laughs> Five is awesome, but that's serious. That's a lot of panties. That is a lot of panties. Right. If you look at the picture, one of them looks like Marlon Wayans and white girls, don't you? <laughs> she does. Yeah. Like, come on now, that's not your real face. Wow. And like, I, that's just so hurtful because like Victoria's Secrets is every man's favorite story, even if you don't know it. So it's just unfortunate when I well, listen. These panties are gonna hit the black market and hit the streets, and and and, and men will still be able to appreciate these stolen panties. Yeah. <laughs> no loss, no harm, no foul. Um, tell these young ladies. <laughs> if it's not guys, no, baby, you ain't okay, got to use no stunt gun to get sexy for me. Yeah, Come you on, ain't, you got to make some stunt on the body for no. Oh, you can get sexy for yourself. Because you can strong arm the panties rather than use a stunt gun or some mace. You ain't got to use a weapon. Don't they make it like a? Um, Second degree thing is use a weapon. I'm just like, who are you that works there that cares that much to jump in front of some know, right? <laughs> I don't care about I was who. like, stop with those panties. <laughs> <laughs> halt there. Halt. Give me the brassiere. <laughs> like, nah. Oh, Son, man. I'm just like, you got that brass. So you pull it out, that's you. It's your draws. It's your draws, man. Take it, man. I don't want them no more. <laughs> <laughs> we don't want them no more. <laughs> Jay Still, what's going on out here, baby? What's going on? I you know I like to eat. Fat girl Nola. And, uh, Fat girl Nola. Hold up, I'm having a technical difficulty. But there is a food truck park that is opening. Oh, I think in the Bible. Food yeah, truck I think park. It's in Little Garden District. But... Oh no no no! It's on Religious Street. Where is it? It's on Religious Street. Whatever that is. That's that's um Ain't uptown. Got that's uptown. Ain't that's uptown. Got that's uptown. Got um, Deja Vu Food Park is going to be opening soon, y'all, and it's going to feature... So it's called Deja Vu Food Park? Deja Vu Food Park, yeah. And it's going to be basically a collection of food trucks. There we go. Um, the park is going to feature a full bar, covered patio seating, and permanent resident food trucks. Wow. Yeah. Oh, it said open 24 hours in the French Quarter, is what it say on Duffin? Yeah, no, no, I'm from, reading the wrong uh -uh. thing. I'm reading and it's going to be thing. open every day from 10 a.m. to 11 p.m., but then on Fridays and Saturdays, it's open till 2 a.m. Okay. And that's uptown. You're yeah. yeah, in the Garden District, right? Mm -hmm. So you hear right here, no little tours will be doing a Garden uh, District tour uh, stopping at the Food Truck Park. Deja <laughs> 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 Deja vu. Did, we, did they say who? And they uh, spell who? that boo, you know, like boo cat. Okay, thank you, thank you. That's why I can't find it. That's why you can't find it. Who, um, who would be, uh, would be one no, of the No, but they're the, just the saying in general, it's going to have a bar, uh, food trucks, of course. They're going to have a snowball vendor. They're going to have jazz brunches. They don't, let's see. They don't list exactly who's going to be out there yet, I don't think. That's cool. J That's Steel, we're going to check it out anyway. You right? know what they need, J Steel? What they need. They need DC Paul to host the event there. They do wow. need DC Paul. Yeah, because they do everything at the bottom that says live entertainment. Oh, and we, it could be a fact. And it like is a thing. venue. It's a live entertainment venue as well. Their website you is a little... You don't say nothing but a thing. I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm at the website already. They about, really? about to get an email. But yeah, 1618 <laughs> Religious Street. In, oh, 1681 <laughs> Religious Street. Dyslexia, sorry. And it's going to be coming soon. Wow. We don't have I'm a date yet, but that, man. That's going to be dope. And that's very interesting, the fact that, like, the food truck explosion, that's a post-Katrina thing, right? Because I don't remember seeing it that thing. So food trucks growing up. It I is. think so. I, I, I don't want to misquote, so I ain't going to name drop the, the brand, but one of these brands had the option, uh, had the, the chance to try a brick-and-mortar restaurant of their own and realize that the food truck was more profitable for them. So, I think like, I know which one you're talking about. After trying it out, mm -hmm. they shut it down. It was like, we're well, just going to do the truck because the truck works out better for yeah. us. Um, so, yeah, it's for people being independent business owners. Um, it's probably more... It's a lot cheaper to buy a truck than to buy a business. And I like that they're going to be stationary because otherwise, typically, you have to find like the food truck right. schedules and follow them around. some of these food trucks out here, they know where to go, where the people going to be at. And right. that's why why have people come to you when you go to the people. Right. So, well, yeah. it's good to have an option of both now. Yeah, right yeah, now. Right nice. now. Mm -hmm. So I wonder, so because what does that mean? Like, if you're a food truck, you you mobile with yours. So how often, like, why would you even go to a food truck? Park? I got multiples. I'm, I'm more than sure if you got more than one truck, because some yeah, of them does, okay. do. Right. They probably going to send one that'll be stationary, while the other one, have, or the other two have a big, big business handling business. That kind of takes away the magic of a food truck, though. You pretty much go to, like, you pretty much go to Rue Carre or, like, a food, like a food court. 
you be going to like St. Claude and St. Rock Market. Like the St. Rock, right. yeah. It's similar. You know, it's very similar. I mean, it's, it's more flavors for New Orleans, man. So wait. <laughs> I wait. I'm just, I'm just <laughs> understanding. You're telling me it's a parking lot. Basically. It's a parking lot. And they're going to let a people park their truck there. Lot. Okay. All yeah, right. Now, decent. I like that. I, 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 just, I just got it. Now, when I was jumping on Silent Disco, with a bunch of people listening to headphones. Because, because I had been to one, so I, <laughs> so I, I could that, that, You, like, you say I got to open my mind, okay. so I'm, I'm right with you. you hey, okay. but open your mind to this mobile Piccadilly Park. Okay. 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 <laughs> Piccadilly Mobile. <laughs> Piccadilly Mobile. <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, all right. Malik, you got another one? Yes. Uh, so, so after 60 countries, 359,000 uh -huh. fans, uh -huh. 208, 208 um, hours, 1,000 hours, Put it in. One, one sold out tour in Europe, another sold out show in Israel, mm -hmm. Tank and the Bangers are finally coming back home to New Orleans. Give them the applause. Yes. We love us and Tank and the Bangers here on this show, man. In fact, when we go to the break, Brian... Have some queued up by tanking the bangers. Man, eggs over easy for fair. No, 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 because we the oh. way we had the last episode. Can't figure do quick this episode, that'd be cool if we turn up a little bit. Mm -hmm. Um but I mean, it's just great yeah. to have them home. Yeah. We're, we're happy. No, they, no, no, no. they had a sold out show in Israel. In Israel, Israel yo, yeah. in Tel Aviv. Um, and Tabia from Tank of the Bangers was on episode two, two or three, or three of, one of, this, of this one. Um, they were already in the midst of That was the same night that Tank of the Bangers was performing with Nora Jones, I think, at the yeah. same mm -hmm. theater, at the same night. Um, so they were already on their way. And and don't like, they have a show coming up? The, the New Year's Eve show? Yeah, that's what they Joy. Yeah, yep, with, uh, with Cool Nasty, Boom. Alfred Banks, Boom. Yes. Steve Crude. Boom. Um, I'm going to go ahead and say it out loud. So I, I'm, Here we um, go. Okay. Let them know. Right. Speak it. Go ahead and say it out loud. Speak yeah. it. Yeah. Jesus. Go ahead and say it out loud. I'm speaking into existence. I'm going to host that show on New Year's Eve at the Joy. Um, okay. I've, I've, I've already asked... You know, all of the artists that I know, um, I've made some some contacts at the Joy. I've sent the email. I got the website, whoisdcpaul.com. So I feel like um, I am the natural mm -hmm. choice yeah. to host that show. I've had a great 2017. Tang and the Bangers has had an amazing 2017. Cool Nasty has had a great 2017. And Alfred you host Banks. with them on Wednesday. Do, yeah, right. Alfred Banks is on our first episode of this uh, I've hosted all the Tang and the Bangers backyard hangouts. I feel like I'm speaking it. I will host New Year's Eve. Beth the Joy with Tank and the Bangers, right. Sweet Crude, Alfred Banks, and Cool Nasty. Mm. Bang. Yeah. So for everybody, so for yeah. everybody out there, yeah. whenever y'all... Whenever y'all promote this, y'all need to say all those names and say allegedly hosted by the Millennial Arsenio. Boom. DC Paul. <laughs> there you go. Yeah, man, because that I either way I'm gonna be there, even if I ain't on stage. Um that, you is, will that be would on be stage. a great way. I mean, I will be on stage. But that'd be a great way to end to end the year. Um anybody in New Orleans that you've been following Tank of the Bangers, man, I feel like their success is our success. Yes. I do. You know, like that I I grew up in the same neighborhood in Mishu as Tank. Um and like she makes me believe it's possible for all of us. You, know what I'm you watch the growth from the very beginning yes, on up. We, you hear me? Yeah. Everybody we know when either with the like you know her. Like some right. people pop from New Orleans, and you be like, wait, what it was that? I never seen her before. Right, but no, she. Now nah, you know somebody who knows somebody who went to school with somebody from them. This, this, but yeah, she, you know. she people people know her. She ain't like grew up on the West Bank or nothing like that. Like, and was involved. Was involved, and then with the one of the founding members of Team Snow. So, Team like, Snow. she got roots in the city. So I feel like every time that they, that band has a successful moment, um, the city the city rejoices with them. Um, I love them. I do. If it ain't already yeah, obvious, yeah, I love yeah, them. We, we know it. You know what? Is it time for a break? I'm about to say, we ain't got nothing more to say after that one. Everybody got yeah. something else? Mm -hmm. You know what's time for a break? Nothing, nothing worthy enough. Yeah, nothing, yeah, no, Once you've been on the tank and the bangers and, you know, D.C. Paul, right. and, and the, the alleged show. host of the New Year's show. Not, 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 not alleged, he's supposed Suppose it. Suppo <laughs> 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 yeah. He's a red though. Because I'm supposed to do it, that's why. You heard me? Ryan, what you got to do? You heard me? You heard me? Hold on, wait, wait, wait. You heard me? 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 Alright, Falsetto, work on it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Alright, we, we're doing octaves. Okay. Alright, what's your IQ though? You the one who's singing you this, really. Y'all don't know, he got the vocals. He got the real vocals, boy. Quick. Oh man, I love this song so much. I've been loving it since the first time I heard it at Jazz Fest in 26 or 15. Um, I got a live version of it, and it's a studio version of it. Quick by Tank and the Bangers. Y'all yeah. stay tuned and don't get nothing on you. I'm actually, I ain't gonna take a smoke break. I'm gonna, I'm gonna jam for this song.
でてつはい。What's your name? Malik P. Malik P. Willie B. Willie B. Willie B. Yeah. Okay, Willie B. How you know Ari and Monet? Uh, I was we performed together. Well, not together. Oh, really? At the poetry show last night. Last night? You was at Sex Live? Yeah. What you did at Sex Live, Willie P? Poetry. Really? You did sexy poetry at Sex Live? Unfortunately. What you was talking about? Sex. Titties? <laughs> you were nah, talking about was, titties? Was no. Titties? Nah, no. It wasn't really well, what? Yeah, a lot of other stuff, like sex. Oh, man, come on now. Yeah, it was cool. This nigga here doing the fucking... I hate you, yeah, bro. I hate you. <laughs> that's what I meant. She, she's really the star. That's what I... That's what? Y'all just met last night? Yeah. Oh, shit. <laughs> sex live must have went down, baby. Sex live must have went down. They met... Epic. They hey. met... <laughs> you real MVP. <laughs> hey, look at what she got? She charged you up. She called me right there, like one percent, one percent. Back to your first day being at Sex Live. Yeah. Yeah. What? 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 what movie that was? No, I actually was like, I mean, met, like I seen her perform. Oh, okay, so okay, so the first day is tonight. I got you. <laughs> Talk to Malik. We just we in here fucking with you. What's your name? Willie B. Where you from, Willie B? Kenna. Kenna, bro. What you do, Willie B? <laughs> I rap, so I write and do plays. You do plays? You an actor? Yeah. Really? No, I, I write them. Oh, you write plays? Oh, wow. Okay. You know, we are, okay, it's a bunch of actors up in here, man. You go to school here or what? Oh, nah, I don't know. I'm 25. What do that mean? No, I, I best in school. <laughs> hmm? That wasn't my school. Okay. Okay, so I'm 25. He like, plays, what? He writes plays. This man here is an award winning actor. Yes, yes. I'm laughing for what's going on. Yeah, I've um, been forgetting I have two Barty awards. Um, well, I've been forgetting I have two awards. Yes, yes, yes. Yes. Lucky self. <laughs> by, by the way, I had two of the award winning acts. I got two of them. One of them came from the Delsas. <laughs> I just remember I got a con. Shout out the Buck. We got a con. We got a con. Yeah, that award at cons. We got a con award. Pick up the Buck. We just start to Edward Buckles. He was here, man. I'm going to get a mic to Jay Still because she's more interesting. Goodness gracious. Who's gonna save me? Who's gonna save me now? Say, say me now. Say, say. Who's gonna save me? Uh huh. Uh huh. Who's gonna save me now? Quick money. Real quick, real quick. Real quick, real quick. Real quick, real quick. Quick money. Real quick. Quick money. Uh huh, you don't know this song, huh? Shame on you, really. My homie worked with Landon. Landon Oubre? You know Landon? Yeah, we worked together. I told you I saw him. You did say you saw Landon Oubre is a songwriter, by the way. He was supposed to come on one of these episodes, but I think he got into a car accident. Okay, we gotta close that door. I'm about to walk out. I'm sorry. That smell ain't no good. <laughs> uh, my bad. I'm trying to get uh, the sound. How do you get a sound effect on that? Because I wanted to play that for the next one. Brian, he know. Brian, he said, you supposed to know. <laughs> so, okay. Hey, can you take this for a second, Jay? Still, yeah. I'm sorry. Back on you. Hey, I know. Back on you. We going back in? I know you hate it. Are we going back in here? Yeah, we're going back in. Oh, what are we doing? Standing right here? Like, I don't know what's going on. Oh my god. It's like. At the men's relief, y'all. How was your day? Three viewers. Me? Yeah, come on. What I did? Oh, you want to put me on? What have you done? What are, what are you doing today? It's not like you was just a busy day. You was running. What did I do today? You know, it's going to rain all like four or five days straight next week. That's not cool. Somebody's going to be making children next week. Not you, though. You gonna be making children, really? So what? You gonna be making I got work to do. Like I, you got children to make? No, not children. But I, well, I do have children. I got uh, I got a, a website to finish. When I, when I, a blog to put in place. I got babies too. 
Like, yeah, I'm trying to start 2018, you know, right. on, the, on that foundation. Yeah, same, same. Okay. Did you, uh, plug myself. Y'all go follow. 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 Y'all go follow.
Desire by Janine McGee. That song, man, that girl is blown on that song. I love, I love that song. I'm looking forward to new material from her. What you play right before that? I forgot. Oh, that was Tank of the Bangers. Quick. Quick. Yeah. Yeah, we was in here jamming to that. Um, and shout out to, to Ms. Aria Monet and Rob Kazi, our, our guests for this episode. They're still around, um, but they were really good interviews, were they not? Yes, yeah. they were yeah, amazing. Talk, Thank right? y'all for coming through. Great really. people to talk to. Right. Um, so I think we got a little time for our last two segments here on the Miss Believe Radio Show. Um, my homie, uh, that actor guy Bats, is such a rebel, and every episode I like to let him go unbridled and just let him just run wild with reckless abandon mm. and give somebody that neck. So yeah. Bats, yeah. Who are you giving the next Man, this is the master of nectomony, the doctor of nectar necronomics uh -huh. in the building uh -huh. today. Um, to this sound, you know, I'm not gonna give the neck to a person, man. Did y'all know that the official poverty rate is 13.5 percent? Wow. Yeah, man. That yeah, that means that 43.1 million Americans lived in poverty according to official measures. And that's just the people that, that they was able to count. A lot of people that are poor and poverty don't do the census. So mm -hmm. you got almost, you got to add more percentages and uh, estimates to that. Plus undocumented Amer uh, Americans. And it gets, it gets larger and larger. The um, homeless statistics, man. Homelessness is, um, of course, rising and rising. Over. They say only 18 states have, have shown a, di a decrease in homelessness. And right now, I believe it's at 16.7%. They say it, like, per 10,000 people. is like it, It's just ridiculous. Thing. I'm looking at all these things. That there's a lot of poor people in this country right. right a lot a lot of poor people in this country and when I think about all the things that we spend on that we spend money on and whether it's whether it's bombing other countries whether it's trying to build other countries I always look at like dang Oprah I appreciate, I appreciate what you did for Africa dog but I know like a lot of little kids out here right now that that's in foster homes that need that need that same amount of space and I saying you can't do both I'm just hoping that we can do both so I'm looking at so much like just like you know just being you know just being broken black in this joint you can see like just living living yourself they thought they always they often talk about how millennials don't do this millennials don't do that that's because a lot of stuff got broken <laughs> during our during our growth and our and our journey into adulthood so when i look at one thing that's very very potent for millennials that that is for millennials and for the ones under us and that is the rise of the internet man the internet changed the entire world that goes without saying that's a complete understatement so when i look at where it's evolving too because most times we give it props whether it's the memes whether it's whether it's um you know conversations on twitter whether it's the advancements in, in the fact that i'm i get tired because I, I get tired of debating with people because i'm just like you could google anything you got the world. You have every information thing at your fingertips with the internet, man. That's power. That's crazy power. And apparently... They want to take that power. You, you know, shout, shout out to the FCC and what I call the white man, the, the super shout Republican out. cats. I don't mean shout out in no positive ways. If you heard about net neutrality and the whole deal about repealing net neutrality, which on, 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 on one basis has already happened. So basically, they want to charge you. They want to charge you to just use the internet. So this is this is meme going around that gives you just an idea. These are not exact numbers, but an idea of what that means for people who be wondering like, what's all this is net neutrality talk? Why it's a problem that is getting repealed? Imagine every time you go to Twitter, that's fifteen dollars a month. Every time you go to Snapchat, that's ten dollars a month. Just to go to YouTube, that's twenty extra dollars a month on the actual on the internet bill that you act already paying. Ten dollars per movie on ten dollars per movie on Netflix, not ten dollars for oh I'm get to do what I want. Ten dollars every time you want to stream that because. Because now they're charging the, the amount of bits that you're using with your IP address and the amount of stuff that you're doing on there. It's almost like if you don't have unlimited on your phone, now it's going to be like if you don't have unlimited on your internet, you can't go to every site you want. Mm -hmm. And that gets deep. That gets so deep when you see how much money they stack and that's one of those unnecessary. It feels so unnecessary to pull that off. And how does it, to, to do that to Americans when we look at poverty, when we look at the fact that most of us broke. It's like the middle class starts shrinking. You see rich people, you see broke people, and you see people jumping in between classes. And when we look at what this does communities of color, I, I found this article, they said the open internet allows people of color to tell our own stories and organize for racial justice. When activists are able to turn out thousands of people in the streets at a moment's notice, it's because the ISPs aren't allowed to block their messages on websites. The mainstream media have long misrepresented, ignored, and harmed people of color. And thanks to systemic racism, economic inequality, and runaway media consolidation, people of color own just a handful of broadcast stations. While even reading this whole thing, it's basically saying that them people at the top won't push that button and say, hey, Black Lives Matter, I don't your website to get that much views and now for whatever reason it's slow internet to go to black lives matter at any point if they feel like they want to slow you up or don't want you to get information if when if this thing if congress let this go down they can control you they have all control over the internet and they can get it out your pockets just to give you a piece of the pie that we've been getting for free for what two three decades now so yes the fcc the fcc you will get that front hand you will get that backhand you will get it licked you will get it sticked you will get every piece of this neck you get that neck 
make you get that name because it don't make no sense to be charging something that's been free for this long. Eat it. Eat it. All right. Oh. Ooh, all right. Mm -hmm. Get, get, get that, that next to the whole FCC. This the whole time. FCC, not damn the cancelers, man. You got balls. Yeah, man, FCC. I got they, balls and I'm feeling estrogenated. The FCC. Estrogenated. Are the people who told us we can say balls on this radio show? <laughs> <laughs> on the radio. Well, on the radio. Well, Genitalia <laughs> is going rampant on the Misbelief Radio man, Show. All right. Well, that, that was that next. But that, because that don't make no sense, y'all. Yeah, I, I, I agree with you, man. So I like to let... Best turn it up with that neck, and as always, we end our show with one of our one or both of our Sankofa birds, um, making us take a look back and meditate on um, a person, a time, a concept, a place, something that came before us um, that we can appreciate as millennials. So, Malik, what you got for us this week? So, as y'all know, I travel all around the city, mm -hmm. and um, the paper monuments or papermonument.org, they've been posting these really cool posters about New Orleans history all around New Orleans. Uh, and they did this poster, and I knew of the history, but I didn't hear about this particular story. Um, and I wanted to give it about the sit-in at McCroy's. Um, in the 1960s, we all know the heart of the civil rights movement and all this. And you hear about Martin Luther King and Malcolm X, but a lot of times you don't hear about Woodward down here in New Orleans. And there was an organization called CORE, which is the Congress of Racial Equality. And this organization was mandated by high school students and college students. So there was like the Black Lives Matter or the BYP of their era. So it was only students. It wasn't adults. It wasn't Martin Luther King. Them. It was just students. And they had a core chapter here in New Orleans. Now, the core chapter in New Orleans was national renowned because they was known as soldiers. Like, if they had a, a demonstration or a freedom rise like the core of New Orleans, their members was like, we can go, we can do it. So that at, all over the nation, people knew who core of New Orleans was because they was like, those are the body people from New Orleans. And during the 1960s, they decided to do sit-ins. So you hear about the sit-ins, you know, they sat in at the lunch counters. And a lot of people know that happened here in New Orleans. So in 1960, the core Congress of Racial Equality, they sat down at the Woolworth. And the next week, they sat at, at down at this um, store called McCroy's. And all of the um, big stores had lunch counters at that time. So it was a guy, Rudy Lombard, from Xavier University, um, Aretha Castle Haley from Southern University at New Orleans, Cecil Carter of Dilla University, and Lanny Goldfish, a white student from Tulane University, they went into this um, market, and they sat down and asked to be served, and they wouldn't serve them, and they was arrested. Now, what made this one special was they was arrested and charged with criminal anarchy by the city of New Orleans. And this case went all the way to the Supreme Court. That these, these young people, they was like, y'all trying to Stop society. Now, criminal anarchy. Anarchy. Yes. That's a so, charge. So it went all the way to the Supreme Court. The Supreme Court was like, nah, y'all kind of tripping. We already went through Brown versus Board. They have rights too. You're supposed to serve them, this, that, and the other. So it's just talking about their presence of young people and how young people need a change. So when you hear the name of Rita Castle Haley, that ain't the name to be played with. These people were Rudy Lombard and Cecil Carter. These was people who put their lives on the line. Because think about you, 1920, and somebody is telling you you're being charged with criminal anarchy. That's something, you know, you like. What, what is that? You know what I'm saying? Up for so they, they stand against the Mayor Chuck Morrison and those people all the way to the Supreme Court to make a stance for ourselves. So I just wanted to shout out this story. This is a really cool poster of them yes, it is. sitting at the lunch counter. Oh, and and what's that, that, that website you said? Papermonuments.org? Yeah, papermonuments.org. They're doing really great work. And what they're trying to do is they're trying to come up with a conversation on what we can replace those monuments that we took down, what can we replace them with? So that's why they're showing images in history that are not necessarily talk, talked about in New Orleans. Okay, sure. Right. Right. I said they believe homegirls we did that, Dylan. Huh? That was with them dealing with um, that same topic of um, New Orleans. Uh, that, it, was a, it was that story in particular. I want to throw this out here. Also, in that neutrality ain't fully repealed yet. Congress voting on it. I just don't want to say fake stuff. Right, no yeah. information. Okay, and you guys Congress can still vote been... on it. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I just didn't no, want to two minutes heated. left, that's all right. No, I'm not heated, it's just I don't have a lie recorded. Okay, um, and on that note, this has been episode 41 of the Misbelieve Radio Show. Uh, that was a good Sankova session, Malik, thank you very much. I, I did not know about this one, um, and that was a good Dead Next segment. Uh, Baz, you you got turned up. Thanks to all my awesome guests that came through, Miss Aria Monet and Rob Kaze. Thanks to my dope ass co hosts. Who are y'all, real quick? That acting guy, Mr. Bats. And, who, and where can we follow you? At Mr. Bats on all your social media platforms. Spell it out. This is Jay Steele, keeping it real. Follow me on Instagram at Jesso Steele and at Fat Girl Nola. Mm -hmm. Yo, this is Malik of No Nola Tours. Follow me at No Nola Tours. <laughs> 
Okay, this is DC Paul. Look me up at whoisdcpaul.com. I'm DC Paul on Facebook. Who is DC Paul on Instagram and Twitter? Um, check out the misbelief. Uh, the misbelief. One word on Facebook, on Twitter, on Instagram, and everywhere else, y'all. Thank y'all. Thanks to the millions and millions of listeners and watchers and followers and fans. Who will we'll be here next week, same time, same place. Don't get nothing on you. You went back into the um. You know what? Alright, let me take that from you. Don't, don't, don't go nowhere. Let me take that from you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you, Miss Aria Monet. Gracious and beautiful. Gracious and beautiful. Super guest from B. Come on. Going up. Come on out, Willie, Willie P. And um, just real quick, just come on out to the hallway. Nah, nah, nah. They, they be tripping y'all out. Hey, Miss Dana, we really got to get you here. We know you you represent Hollywood South and the black hair, hair in general. All right, y'all. Um, I want to turn around this way real quick. Thanks to everybody who watched this episode. Thanks to Rob Kazi. Thanks to Aria Monet for coming through and blessing our studio 1230 with a live performance. Thanks to my dope-ass co-host. Yeah. Brad, and everybody else, man. Um, I'm DC Paul. We usually have somebody else holding the camera for this part. I'm going to do it this way. Come on, get in there, Willie. No, no, no. You, you here. Willie, Willie P. He was, in, he was in the video the whole time, too. Yeah, great. Thanks. Uh -huh. <laughs> Thank you all for watching and listening. Um, follow The Misbelief. Um, and subscribe on YouTube. Tell your friends about it. We'll see you all later. Don't get nothing on you. All right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Subscribe. Let me turn around and get you that. Get you black folk. Oh, y'all cute. But before you got in there, bets. No, yeah, thank you, man. Um, here you go. Bunch of poses. <laughs> See, usually, bats forget to sign no, up. You're not, no, you're not. <laughs> no, you're not. <laughs> no, you're not. <laughs> he usually forget to sign out of his Facebook, and I get to tweet something, Facebook something about titty crumbs. Usually about titty crumbs. Usually it's about titty crumbs. <laughs> <laughs> Bye, y'all. Bye, Miss Dana. Okay, I will definitely inbox you. Uh, because you were you were there in the, in the audience for the first episode, um, and you were what the misbelief is about. So we'll be in touch. Absolutely. Don't get none on you. <laughs>